is you know, Premier League, the best league in the world. Ultra competitive. You just don't know what's going to happen from game to game. And I think we're in for another treat this afternoon here. Incentive for both teams this afternoon. Arsenal, obviously, with Liverpool losing. Aston Villa with Tottenham losing yesterday. I think we're going to be in for an absolute treat again. So away we go then at Arsenal's Emirates Stadium. Arsenal against Aston Villa here on Five Live and on BBC Sounds. And we've had the players taking the knee for the No Room for Racism campaign this weekend. And away we go with Aston Villa going from right to left in this first half in their chain strip of the blue, kicking towards the north bank and Arsenal left to right towards the clock end and already Villa with a couple of early throws on this near left-hand side which Lucas Digne is going to take the second of just rolling that white ball around in his hands at the moment with Villa sending Diego Carlos their centre-half up into the penalty area as Digne's throw is long, it's intended for him, it's off an Arsenal head then away by Zinchenko, hit by McGinn it's come off an Arsenal player, it's looped back towards goal and over the top of the crossbar and behind for a goal kick from that effort from Ollie Watkins but Villa on the front foot and Leandro Trossard wearing the impact of McGinn's shot which was fizzed towards him. Yeah, that's a half chance for Ollie Watkins on that far post as well. Not really dealing with that long throw into the box. Arsenal's flicked on I think by Saliba. McGinn on the edge of the box. Let's fly with a strike. Cannons off Leandro Trossard and just loops up to Watkins and he's just looking to loop a header over David Rea. Just gets a little bit too much on it. Just clears the top of the crossbar, but the positive start for Aston Villa. Does look a little dazed, Leandro Trossard, as he runs up to take his position on the left side of Arsenal's front three. So as it is at the moment, Gabriel Jesus is the one that is playing through the middle for them. And play back underway with Arsenal in possession on this near right side with White, 10 yards inside his own half, clipping one down the right wing for Saka to chase. Dinia taking no chances, putting it out of play, Arsenal throw deep inside Villa's half on the right as we welcome listeners from the BBC World Service. We're two minutes in here at Arsenal's Emirates Stadium. Arsenal against Aston Villa, the last of these instalments on a, another weekend of title games that mean so much to Arsenal, to Liverpool, beaten today by Crystal Palace and of course to Manchester City who at the moment are at the top of the tree after their emphatic win yesterday against Luton. Erdegaard, Jesus, now Saka in the box, back with Jesus, stopped by McGinn who didn't want to dive into the challenge because he had to really allow Ben White to get to the ball. White did but it's come off his boots and gone behind for an Aston Villa goal kick, 0-0. Yeah, lovely football from Arsenal. A set of play by Jesus, ball into his feet, he's got runners off him, Saka gets the other side of Luka Dinia and in the end it's White coming round on the overlap he looks like he expects a challenge to come in and he's trying to maybe play it off an Aston Villa player for a corner but that actually wasn't the case but interesting to see how high that Aston Villa defensive line is this, this afternoon yeah it's, it's been, been one of the talking yeah, points hasn't it's been it been very this effective season. for most of the season caught a lot of teams offside with it but uh, interesting to see how brave they are at the Emirates Interesting to hear the boos that have been directed at the former Gunners goalkeeper Emi Martinez every time he's had a couple of early touches here. Here is Diaby on the far right-hand side. Zinchenko has stopped him, but not stopped the ball going out of play. So it's going to be an Aston Villa throw. Yeah, big job for Yui Tillemans and John McGinn in that central midfield area for Villa as well. You see the absence of Douglas Luiz and a key, key performer for them in that midfield area this season. Budokar camera as well who's obviously got a long-term injury so big job on for them to in there dealing with those those Arsenal threats. Villa have made a bit of a mess of that throw Conzo was the one taking it he wanted to retrieve it again but the pass back to him was wayward so suddenly it's an Arsenal throw halfway inside Villa's half on the left with Zinchenko with the ball in his hand one of the real leaders of this Arsenal dressing room Alexander Zinchenko but Villa pinch it back once more they've got it with Watkins five yards inside Arsenal's half he sent it over the top out comes Raya out of his penalty area neat touch just dragged it away from Diaby like a calm and collected central midfielder David Raya there very very good that thought he was just going to clear his lines clear that into the crowd but fantastic composure showing a great starting position as well because Diaby's in behind and uh, I don't think Gabriel was going to catch him there but excellent goalkeeping 
Free kick for Arsenal. Saka pushed in the back by Luca Dina on the halfway line. Five minutes in, no goals. Of course, the other thread to this game, and there are so many this afternoon, is that Unai Emery is back here at the Emirates Stadium, had those 18 months in charge of Arsenal, the replacement for Arsene Wenger. Not the answer, though, for Arsenal. Finished fifth in his one full season in charge, but never really felt, or he certainly will never really feel, that he was given a proper crack at the job, and it is not easy shoes to fill when you're coming in for Wenger. Here come Arsenal, Erdogan into the box, Saka right of centre across goal, stopped well by that Villa defence. It was Pau Torres who got himself there and Villa now play their way out and do it very neatly as well because they've got it towards Saniolo on the left who has run forward into Arsenal's half and then the challenge with Gabriel Jesus a foul by Saniolo it is going to be a free kick to Arsenal nil-nil here let's find out what's happened in the second of the women's FA Cup semi-finals because that's the interesting one isn't it Manchester United and Chelsea how's it finished Sunny Rajavachala and it's finished Manchester United 2 Chelsea 1 United beating the team that beat them in the FA Cup final last season they'll have another chance to win that trophy goals from Garcia on the first minute and a header from Rachel Williams on 23 are enough despite Lauren James pulling one back in the second half Chelsea pushed and pushed but couldn't get enough it finishes Manchester United 2 Chelsea one. Thank you, Sani. That is a terrific result for Mark Skinner's side. So they will face Tottenham Hotspur in that FA Cup final. Spurs beating Leicester earlier today by two goals to one after extra time and getting to their first ever women's FA Cup final in the process. Here, nil-nil between Arsenal and Villa. And Villa playing out from the back between the centre-half Torres and the goalkeeper Martinez. And then it's shifted up to the midfield where the backtracking Trossard has fouled Ollie Watkins he feels that it was nothing more than a shoulder push it was actually Morgan Rogers who went tumbling and it is a, a Villa free kick just inside the centre circle no goals so far Danny Gabidon yeah it didn't quite get the press right there Arsenal from the goal kick that was very easy for Aston Villa to kind of play out and play through the middle got the ball into Rogers in a pocket of space Oh, poor pass by Torres on the halfway line. Arsenal taking off him. Erdegaard threading it through to the right for Saka. It's just stifled the momentum a little bit of Arsenal's attack, but not for long. Saka towards the back post. Kai Havertz leapt. Did he leap high enough, though? Because it looked close to him. It's over his head. It's out of play on the opposite side for a Villa throw. Yeah, the cross just looked like it was a little bit too high for him. Villa giving the ball away and they break quickly. Arsenal, Saka down this right-hand side. Inside the 18-yard box, up against Pau Torres, drags it onto his right foot. He's got two options on the far post. Havertz is one of them. Oh, actually looks like he, maybe he's not expecting the ball to come to him. There's a Villa play in front of him. It also looks like he, he ducks away from the cross a little bit. So Villa with the throw on the far right-hand side to us. They're going from right to left in the first half, halfway inside their own half as... The physical battle between Gabriel and Watkins is won by Gabriel and off on that left-hand side go Arsenal again. Good challenge though by Diego Carlos sliding in at the feet of Gabriel Jesus. And then a lovely change of direction from McGinn in midfield who's drifted a pass up with his left foot towards Watkins. Five yards outside Arsenal's box and not down towards Saniolo. Good defending from Ben White though to cover the ground and he nudges it out of play for a Villa throw. Yeah, I think it was a Saliba actually just eating up the ground. Ben White was just caught up field. It was a really fast break from Aston Villa. Good ball in behind from McGinn, finding Watkins, who nods the ball out wide, but Saliba kind of gets across and just uses that pace to, to get to the ball first and just mop things up. Good defending. One of the Unai Emery signings, William Saliba, though he never actually played for Arsenal until three years later. So no goals so far between Arsenal and Aston Villa, and uh, Arsenal have been given a free kick here for a push inside their penalty area let's head off to the rugby shall we because there is a, a big game a Champions Cup quarter-final taking place Stad Toulouse against Exeter Chief what is the latest Adam Whitty? Uh, Toulouse have put the 50 up cruising into the last four Toulouse 51 Exeter 26 Juan Cruz Mali the latest to dot down cruel on Exeter but Toulouse sensational they lead the Chiefs 52-26 with 12 minutes left Wins yesterday for Harlequins, for Leinster and for Northampton Saints as well in their quarter-final games. 6.06 .06 tonight from half past six with Chris and Robbie. And of course we will be to the Masters from eight o'clock at Augusta National tonight with Mark Chapman and the team for the final day of what will be a really intriguing few hours in Georgia. No goals so far between Arsenal and Villa, no real chances either. 
as Trossard collects the ball, holding off Villa's defenders in the process. Back in field for Declan Rice, who just puts his foot on the ball and assesses the situation, the former West Ham player. And back out to the left-hand side for Trossard. In field for Zinchenko. And now on the halfway line, it is Saliba. Saliba for Erdegaard. And back with Ben White again, just inside his own half. Ten minutes played, Arsenal nil. Aston Villa nil. Yeah, just looking at the shape of Aston Villa and they are going with that high defensive line. Not a lot of space in between that back four and that midfield of McGinn and Tillemans just trying to nullify the spaces for Havertz and Odegaard to work in. Remember it finished 1-0 to Aston Villa when these two met earlier in the season and a goal that by this stage of the game had already been scored by John McGinn as well. Arsenal on the front foot here, lovely ball. Havertz, great save Martinez, plunging down to his left-hand side. Havertz probably about five yards away from him when he took aim inside the box. And that is the first significant save of the game. And it's come from the former Arsenal goalkeeper, Emi Martinez. Yeah, decent save, good reaction save. Havertz making that late dart in behind. Left-hand side of the 18-yard box, he gets fed in. The weight on the pass is really good, so we can take the strike on first time. Hits the target, decent save. Just runs in behind McGinn. I think it's Carlos who's desperately trying to get across. Not able to. Yeah, good reaction save from Martinez. Spent 11 years with uh, Arsenal Emi Martinez, so we'll certainly know a few of these players. Zaniolo has misplaced his pass from the halfway line, the Italian. Needed to go forward, really, for Moussa Diaby. It was behind him. And it's out for an Arsenal throw on the halfway line on the far left-hand side here in North London. 0-0, Arsenal and Aston Villa. Remember, earlier today in our other five live Premier League commentary, Liverpool 0, Crystal Palace 1. What a scoreline at Anfield. What a twist in the title race. What an opportunity for Arsenal to try and make this three-horse race a two-horse title race. Yeah, and I have to say Crystal Palace were magnificent first half they could have been two or three up second half was a different type of performance from them they had to defend really well Kim Anderson absolutely outstanding marshalling that Crystal Palace back line and I thought they deserved the win in the end Joachim Anderson, who for my money, Danny, outside of the, the, the big clubs in the Premier League is one of the best centre-half defenders in the league very, very good, yeah Now to Aston Villa, crack this Arsenal team today. An Arsenal team who have not been behind in any Premier League game since a trip to West London on New Year's Eve when Fulham beat them at Craven Cottage. On the back foot again here with Zinchenko, but they don't have Saka as part of this attack. He's still down injured on the halfway line. Zinchenko on the overlap's got it back. Dinked up towards the far post. That's exactly where Saka should have been. Odegaard has come over to collect it instead. Zaniolo's taken it away from him. Zaniolo's clearance has only gone as far as Saliba, who is 50 yards from goal. Saka back on his feet now, but still walking a little gingerly. Zinchenko is assessing whether he needs to put the ball out or not as he collects it on the left. Saka is OK. He is coming forward again to be part of this Arsenal attack. And Arsenal are willing to wait for him. Gabriel, 20 yards outside Villa's penalty area. Here's Declan Rice just popping it into the feet of Zinchenko. Then wide with his left boot from Zinchenko to Trossard, who comes back in field for the Arsenal centre-half, Gabriel. They're quite high at the moment, aren't they, this Arsenal defence? We saw it against Bayern Munich here on Tuesday night as well, and they were caught out. Well, they were, but, you know, if you look at Man City as well, that's how they like to play. It's how a lot of teams are kind of going now. Jesus, I think, just caught offside here. It is about controlling possession these days and trying to pen teams in and just kind of exert that pressure. I don't think I would enjoy a centre-back being that high up the pitch in that kind of midfield area, but the game was very different when I played. Just wondering whether... A, I'm not sure whether the referee just produced a yellow card there. He might have done. It was two an Aston Villa player. There was certainly a cluster of Villa players around him. We'll try and get confirmation of that in a moment. 14 minutes in, no goals between Arsenal and Aston Villa, which seems a bit weird, really, because between them this season, they've scored 192 goals in all competitions, Arsenal and Aston Villa. They certainly haven't shortchanged anybody. Here's uh, Tielemans for Villa, who, remember, are without Douglas Luiz today, suspended after collecting 10 yellow cards himself. Confirmation of that 
that flash of yellow that I saw, it was towards Morgan Rogers. So that's yeah. the first caution yeah, of the game. Yeah, I think that was for the challenge on the Kyle Saka. I think the ref just obviously let play go and then just bringing it back once the, uh, the attack comes to nothing. Long ball forward looking for DRB, cut out by Gabriel, but awkwardly it's come off his head and it's rather than gone forwards, bounced to the side of Arsenal's penalty area and drb has gone onto it. Dinha's come up to join him. He got the ball, Dinha, but he was blocked by Saka, who now looks fit and fresh again as he swipes that ball away for Arsenal and all the way back into Villa's half where Emi Martinez in the all green with the very bright yellow gloves collects it and gives it to Pau Torres, the Spanish centre half who has not scored a goal for Aston Villa since November when he got one against Tottenham Hotspur so will he continue that North London loving today here's Diego Carlos his centre-back partner back with Pau Torres again left-hand side just moving slowly into Arsenal's half then trying to clip it forward for Zaniolo it was wayward of him quite straightforward for Arsenal's defence to deal with and uh, Saliba looks controlled as he and Rice and then Erdegaard settle everything down for the Gunners yeah, really good composure again shown by Saliba the crowd just making him away. <laughs> he was under a bit of pressure there, but didn't panic. Zinchenko over the top. No flag against Havertz at the moment. It's Kai Havertz for Arsenal. And Havertz is eventually denied. He would have been denied anyway, because the flag has gone up for offside against him. Villa managed to get players back. The two centre-halves, Diego Carlos and Pau Torres, were close to Havertz. Martinez saved it in the end. It's quite tight. It's tight, but it is off. Good defensive line held by Villa. Havertz just goes slightly early, but he's just looking to make those runs off John McGinn. I think he's the man who's trying to kind of track those runs in behind and gets caught the wrong side there. McGinn, thankfully, just goes early, Havertz. Senior across, it was missed by Saliba, but there for Arsenal is Zinchenko on the edge of his box before Watkins or Diaby can make anything more of it for Aston Villa. And uh, back goes Saliba to Raya. He sweeps it out to the far left-hand side for Trossard, but all of this at the moment still halfway inside Arsenal's half. Zinchenko then settles the Gunners down with a pass to Rice, who gives it to Jesus on the halfway line. Back with Declan Rice again, who is cantering forward here for Arsenal. Now Erdegaard, five yards outside Villa's box, to the right-hand side for Saka, onto his left foot, far post, Jesus side netting with his head. Could have gone back across goal, went for goal himself, Gabriel Jesus. And that is not a problem for Emi Martinez. Yeah, probably should have gone back across goal. Jesus, the angle was tight for him, but excellent football from Arsenal. And again, worked the ball up the field really quickly. Left to right, Saka with that delivery into the far post. He is under a bit of pressure from concert. Maybe just does enough to put him off. And he's trying to beat Martinez on his near post. Doesn't quite get it right has scored for both Arsenal and for Manchester City against Aston Villa in the past, Gabriel Jesus. In fact, he scored for Manchester City in a 6-1 win at Villa Park back in 2020. But goals for Arsenal, at least in recent weeks, have not been forthcoming for Gabriel Jesus. That was an opportunity. Villa with a throw here, five yards inside Arsenal's half on the left, 18 minutes in, no goals between Arsenal and Aston Villa on five live. We're on BBC Sounds, where you can... Listen to every single national and local radio. And indeed, we're on BBC World Service as well as Luca Dina sends it back into his own half and it is picked up by Pau Torres with those orange and green boots and into the back line for Diego Carlos, who is five yards further back behind him with the white wristband wrapped around his left wrist. And back with Emi Martinez, his goalkeeper. Will Villa be relatively pleased with how they've contained Arsenal so far, Danny Gabidon? Yeah, I think so. Almost 20 minutes gone and, you know, still nil-nil. Arsenal have had some moments. They've played some good football and cut Aston Villa open, but not really any clear-cut chances as of yet. So, uh, so far, so good from a Villa perspective. Only a win for Arsenal will take them back to the top of the Premier League table. If they don't win here, the weekend will end with Manchester City at the summit. White for Rice, for Arsenal, now Erdegaard, 20 yards outside Villa's box, it is just right of centre as Erdegaard collects it again, he's picked a peach of a pass into the box for Saka, and he's hit the side netting as well, the opposite side netting to Gabriel Jesus from two minutes ago, but what about the pass from Martin Erdegaard? Yeah, sensational from Erdegaard, he's got the vision, but the execution to go with it, he just goes to sleep, Luca Dini on his left-hand side, Saka makes a run, 
off the back of him, gets in behind him. And it's Pau Torres who gets across and just makes that strike on goal from Saka a little bit more difficult. He's not able to hit the target in the end. Won't surprise you to learn that Martin, Martin Erdegaard has... Well, hold on to that thought. Arsenal have got it back again. Erdegaard has slipped, though, on the byline as he was trying to cross. He was falling backwards in doing so. And Villa now will get the chance to play out, and they've done it well. Out towards Saniolo, and the centre-half wasn't sure whether to come or not there. Saliba and Villa have worked this really well. They've got it to Watkins, who's on the edge of the box. Watkins now into the penalty area, stumbled slightly. Arsenal getting bodies back there. Watkins has it again for Villa. Now with Morgan Rogers. Rogers on his left foot. That's repelled as well. Tielemans picks it back up for Villa once more. 20 minutes in, nil-nil, but a little more positive from Aston Villa as they slow things down. Arsenal with all 11 behind the ball at the moment. Villa in possession, and they're 25 yards outside of Arsenal's penalty area as the noise from the home crowd goes up a notch again here just to encourage their team, just to ensure that there are no slips. I'm sure they will be having flashbacks to last season, particularly after watching Liverpool lose earlier to Crystal Palace. It will feel all so very familiar to Arsenal fans. And quite possibly. That was a good opportunity for Ollie Watkins. Just took too long in possession. Ball on the left with Dinia. Low crossing. Zinchenko should get there. Stretches out a left boot. Wins it. Then has it taken off him by Diaby. This is McGinn. Erdegaard's got it back, though, for Arsenal. Only one pass on. It's a forward one for Gabriel Jesus. I'm racing over to cover the ground there first. Diego Carlos, the Villa centre half, and they have it back again just inside their own half, Aston Villa. Yeah, game just getting stretched there. The last couple of minutes. Good counter attack from Aston Villa where they had good options. Zania Willow picking out Watkins. He's 1v1 against Gabriel. He's just looking to hold him up. He's not sure whether to get a strike away or maybe pass, and then that allows Trossard to get back and pick his pocket. Watkins and Rogers trying to play a 1-2, but the two didn't quite happen because the ball didn't come back to Morgan Rogers. And Arsenal move forward with Erdegaard, pulls himself away from John McGinn, who had a grab at his shirt. And then from the halfway line with his left boot, knows that Trossard's in space on the left, and he carries it forward for Arsenal. Now on the periphery of the Villa penalty area, great defending from Moussa Diaby. Went shoulder to shoulder with the other number 19, Leandro Trossard. Got the ball back, and then Trossard has committed a foul eventually on Diego Carlos. Yeah, good defensive work from Diaby. Recovery runs from Aston Villa, really good there because the potential Arsenal counter attack was on. That's going to be important for Aston Villa this afternoon how quickly they kind of get back into shape. They don't want the game to be open and stretched because that will suit this Arsenal team. But Diaby doing really well to get back in and just help his, uh, his full back there. Only one win in their last five, Aston Villa in the. Premier League, they were five points clear of Spurs just over a month ago on the same points coming into this afternoon's game but of course because Tottenham were beaten 4-0 at Newcastle yesterday the goal difference took such a hammering that Aston Villa moved above Spurs in the table without playing and back into the top four Zinchenko lifting it forward, out comes Martinez did really well, knew his situation, got there before Havertz keeps getting in, no, keeps getting in Havertz oh, just... then Zinchenko from distance but it wasn't a problem for Villa that was from almost a halfway line from Zinchenko, but even though Martinez was out of position, there were a couple of Villa players back on the line anyway. Oh, it's a poor kick from Martinez, straight to Zinchenko, and he tries to send it back on the volley. Pau Torres on the cover. Havertz keeps making that run in behind. He's just running off the back of McGinn, and he's letting him go. He's got in on a couple of occasions. A couple of times the ball's just been a little bit too heavy, but... former Premier League defender and Welsh international Danny Gavidon with us here on Five Live for Arsenal against Aston Villa on this Sunday afternoon as Declan Rice gets it for Arsenal halfway inside Villa's half, gives it to Erdegaard, drags his foot over the ball, pulls it onto his left boot, then moves and drops the shoulder and goes back the opposite way towards the right-hand side where White has laid it off for Saka, back in field for Erdegaard, just a couple of yards outside Villa's penalty area, White into the box, Gabriel Jesus with the smart turn and the shot that was blocked before it got to Martinez. Back to the edge of the penalty area for Declan Rice. Arsenal are just beginning to put their foot down on the accelerator Yeah, now. what a block from McGinn, though. It's a really good block. Great skill from Jesus inside the 18-yard box. Just turns inside Pau Torres, and he's looking to get a strike away on that left foot. Unai Emery is right on the edge of his technical area. The Aston Villa manager desperately trying to get some instructions onto his players as Gabriel picks up the ball for Arsenal. Nil-nil here, Arsenal against Aston Villa. On five live, Trossard on the far left-hand side. 
Back in field for Zinchenko. Here is Rice. Havertz dropping off again into that little pocket of space. Now Erdegaard, who can, as we know, make things happen and make things happen from nothing for Arsenal. White and Saka combining. Back with Bakaya Saka. Erdegaard spins away from Villa's defence. Now stands up and faces goal. Saka to the byline. Cross into the penalty area. Gabriel Jesus muscled out of it by Pau Torres. And the goal kick eventually off Erdegaard. Oh, no. In fact, the decision is Arsenal corner, and some of the Villa players disagree with that. Yeah, certainly look from here. Zaniolo played the ball off an Arsenal player, and it out for the goal kick, but... Wiseman obviously has a better view than us, so we'll take his word for it. So in front of the clock end, then, an Arsenal corner from this right-hand side. 25 minutes passing on the big clock above the stands. And no goals so far between Arsenal in second and Aston Villa, who began the afternoon in fourth. Saka raises his right arm into the air and the corner towards the near post is headed away by Villa. Diaby picks it up, takes it on his chest. He's been harassed by Zinchenko. He's run into trouble. He's run into Saka and Arsenal have got it back again with Trossard. And now Zinchenko, reverse pass for Saka. It was wayward of him, who could do all he could, really, just to try and stop it from going out for a goal kick which he did but he's relinquished possession to Aston Villa and now they break again as Rogers passes it out to this left hand side for Diaby Arteta is telling his players to get back here Diaby now Zaniolo the two wingers at the moment both on this left hand side for Villa and back in field for Yuri Tielemans who looks around gives it to Diego Carlos in the centre circle in Arsenal's half now Konza is playing as a right back again today for Aston Villa Infield for McGinn. Now Tielemans spinning the Belgian. Scored two goals against England, didn't he, in that friendly last month at Wembley, Yuri Tielemans. And here is Pau Torres. Arsenal nil, Aston Villa nil. All over in the rugby in the Champions Cup quarter final, Adam Witte. Toulouse will face Harlequins in the semi-finals after crushing Exeter 64-26. Nine tries from the French side, four in 12 early second half minutes decided things. And uh, the five-time champions really romped home at the end. Full-time, Toulouse 64, Exeter 26. Thank you very much, Adam. No goals here between Arsenal and Aston Villa on five live. But Villa have had the ball for the last couple of minutes. Now they might be able to work something. Morgan Rogers on the edge of the box, went past one, couldn't get past Ben White having initially breezed away from Saliba, Morgan Rogers, the young Villa attacker. And Arsenal collected again with Trossard on the far left-hand side. And they enjoyed that, the home crowd from Leandro Trossard, a back heel to Alexander Zinchenko inside his own half. Yeah, it was just a straight ball played into Morgan Rogers. He's able to turn the quick feet that go past Saliba, but Ben White did a good job on the cover, coming across on that right-back position and a really well-timed tackle. Look at Unai Emery down on the touchline, Danny. He, looks no, like he doesn't stop, does he? <laughs> looks like he's at a rave down there. <laughs> Arms going absolutely everywhere on the touchline. His Villa players are fit. I imagine he's pretty fit as well, considering the energy he has to put into 90 minutes on the touchline. He's Dina, the former Everton defender. Now Morgan Rogers, who has had an impact in recent weeks for Villa, having joined from Middlesbrough in January. Out it goes to Diaby on the right, edge of the penalty area of Arsenal. Konza on the overlap, cross was poor from Esri Konza, behind before it reached any Villa player goal kick. Yeah, centre-back's cross there, Chris. Can't really say too much. <laughs> I've, I've been there playing in that right-back position. You get into those kind of forward areas and you, it just doesn't quite feel natural for you. Good opportunity for Konza there, just trying to hang one up to the far post. He's right on the, on the byline there. Mind you, didn't he score against Wolves a couple of weeks ago from a very similar position as that, Esri Konza? I don't know if he meant it or not, but one of those from the byline that he sort yeah. of looped up to the far post take and it dropped it. in. He'll take it. Yep. That's what all the defenders say, don't they? <laughs> Danny Gabadon with us here on Five Live. And Arsenal, who have probably had the best chances so far, now might have the best one of the lot as Havertz runs through and Diego Carlos ran with him and the Villa defender got his boot on the ball. And even though Emi Martinez can't stop it from rolling behind for an Arsenal corner, that is excellent centre-half work from Diego Carlos. That keeps happening, Chris. That Havertz run off the back of McGinn in between full-back concert and Carlos. And it's only his pace that saves him. There's recovery pace, Carlos coming across. He just leans into Havertz, gets something on the ball. It's good defending in the end. 
but that can't continue to happen that, that so, ball in behind that run in behind so you're saying positioning poor pace good there well somebody needs Diego to pick Carlos. him up Diego Carlos needs to see the run get across quicker or McGinn needs to track the run Europa League winner with Sevilla Diego Carlos and that team managed by Julian Lopetegui former Wolves boss Arsenal have still yet to take this corner and we are about to tick into the 30 minute mark in this game a sacker from this right hand side Arsenal going from left to right in this first half in their red and white home shirt and Saka left footed swinging it in to the edge of the six yard box Gabriel was close to it but there were so many Villa players around him and everybody was so tight to one another that he couldn't generate any power on the header and it's a goal kick it was more floated delivery from Saka into that far post area I think it's concert just grappling Gabriel just stops him from heading the ball neither of the two players kind of head the ball in the end and the ball just goes over the line for a goal kick it's good work from from Concert. doesn't win the ball but just does enough to stop Gabriel attacking it well 12 months ago today Arsenal were six points clear of Manchester City at the top of the table it's actually a year on Tuesday since Arsenal's 2-2 draw with West Ham which you might remember because they were 2-0 up, relinquished a two-goal lead, having squandered a two-goal lead for the second game running. Did so against Liverpool the week before. And then, of course, they drew here with Southampton, got smashed by Manchester City. And that really was their title challenge in tatters last season. But it does feel different for Arsenal this season as Pau Torres collects the ball inside his own box. Villa are playing a bit of a dangerous game here. Tielemans has got it out to that right-hand side for Konza. And in the end, with nothing really on for Diego Carlos, he's lifted it upfield to the halfway line where Arsenal have picked it up again with Gabriel. Yeah, and they will do that, Aston Villa. They will look to play out. They're brave in possession. They will take chances. You know, we saw them a few weeks back at West Ham doing something very similar and they struggled with playing out from the back in that kind of first half. Jesus scampering down the left-hand side to get to the ball ahead of John McGinn inside the final defensive third of Aston Villas. Havertz with the layoff on the edge of the box for Rice. Rice into the penalty area. Trossard on the angle. Diego Carlos close to him. Contact between the two of them. Trossard tumbled backwards, then thumps the ground in frustration that he didn't get the penalty from the referee. Arsenal have still got possession with Trossard. He's done well to get it to the edge of the box where Jesus gives it to Erdegaard. Erdegaard tried to turn it back round the corner for Gabriel Jesus. And eventually for Villa, it's away and out of play from Diego Carlos. Yeah, he's been good so far. Diego Carlos just needs to be careful in those situations, though. Inside his own 18-yard box. Don't think it was a penalty. But Trossard's going nowhere there. He's got his back to goal. He's holding the ball up. He just needs to stand his ground there. Referee today, by the way, is David Coote as Villa come forward. And in these moments, they do look a threat to Arsenal. Tielemans, Tielemans sending it through, but sending it with too much pace for Diaby. And at his feet, sprawling David Raya to collect it, the Arsenal keeper. Yeah, need to make more of those opportunities, Aston Villa. It's a lovely ball played into Tielemans. He just runs off the back of Declan Rice and he's just looking to feed Diaby in behind, just over hits the through ball. Saka again picking up the ball, looking to run at Villa's defence, gives it to Odegaard, it deflects back to Saka and then tries to squeeze it through the gap for Jesus. Lots of nearly moments so far for Arsenal and indeed at times for Aston Villa as well where the final ball hasn't been quite right. But Odegaard pinching it back off Rodgers who has been left in a heap on the halfway line. Here's Havertz from the edge of the box, stopped by the legs of Diego Carlos. Back with Trossard, Trossard shoots, closed down by John McGinn who's made a couple of vital interceptions in the first half and then Diaby retrieves it for Villa yeah done a good job Villa kind of getting bodies back quickly getting back into shape just make it difficult for Arsenal to find a way through really a shot on goal and they have had the two or three moments when they've had good possession as well they've been able to kind of cut through Arsenal and get into some good areas but it's just been that kind of end product it's been that kind of final pass that's been lacking so far the Villa fans are singing in the corner of this stadium the southeast corner of the Emirates Stadium so on the opposite side to us the Arsenal supporters respond in kind with vocal noise of their own but the longer this game goes on at 
nil nil the nervier Gunners fans will be considering that Manchester City have got their job done this weekend Liverpool did not here's Zaniolo was having his shirt pulled by Ben White who's probably going to get booked for that but Villa has still got the ball Diaby from the edge of the box blocked by William Saliba who turns his back on it and gets something on it the defender good block Zaniolo has been very good as well he's been a really good outlet in terms of retaining the ball for Aston Villa and allowing them to spring on the counter-attack I think he's just really hurt himself Nicolo Zaniolo he's tumbled off the ball here and he's rolling around in a lot of pain but Arsenal are going to carry on with their attack and there's no reason for them really to stop Zinchenko Zaniolo's not back on his feet at the moment Oli Watkins is asking Arsenal to put the ball out and Zinchenko is going to oblige and the Arsenal fans don't like that because they were in possession right outside the Villa penalty area but Clearly, clearly Nicolo Zaniolo is in pain and actually some of the Villa players are going over to Alexander Zinchenko and personally thanking him, recognising that Zaniolo is in trouble. Oh, very nice of Zinchenko there, I'm not sure if I would have done that. Ben White rightly booked as well, good referee in David Koo. Zaniolo getting his shirt dragged by Ben White and he allowed the attack to continue which came to nothing the shot from Diaby was was blocked in the end but uh, I'm not sure what Zaniolo does here I think it might be his own man Tillemans runs into his own man and possible possibly, clash of knees yeah possible clash of knees there his line on his back at the moment the Italian who has been treated by a couple of Aston Villa medical team members Help back to his feet, so I think he's okay. Saniolo to carry on here, and while he is receiving the treatment, Mikel Arteta is taking the opportunity to gather all 11 of his Arsenal players around him down on the touchline to give some instructions to them. I can see him down there, the Arsenal manager, in all black, uh, gesticulating to individual members, hands moving all over the place, clapping them together, clearly trying to come up with a plan to break this Aston Villa team down 37 minutes in Arsenal nil Aston Villa nil what might the message be from Mikel Arteta as he takes a big swig of water from one of those red Arsenal cups keep playing Kai Havertz in I think possibly because <laughs> he looks the most dangerous player he keeps making those runs off John McGinn in behind that Aston Villa back line he's got in once he's been offside once Diego Carlos has had to come across a couple of times with a couple of good bits of defending not the fan product really from either team I would say both teams look threatening Arsenal more so wasn't actually on the touchline Mikel Arteta when Arsenal lost at Villa Park in the reverse fixture back in December because he was serving a, a touchline ban here's Bukayo Saka for his team though on the right side of Villa's box Declan Rice sweeping onto his right foot towards that far post I wonder whether that was going to go into his own net there from Diego Carlos who got his foot on it and the ball sort of moved away from him but also moved away from his own goal which was good news for him but Arsenal will come at Villa again on this right side with Saka now Erdegaard on the edge of the box Erdegaard looking for some space onto Zinchenko further still to the left side on the angle for Trossard Trossard into the box Erdegaard shot closed down well by Pau Torres lots of Villa players getting themselves in the way at the right moments as Arsenal continue to probe as Erdegaard flicks it round the corner Havertz to the far post looking for Saka who won the header but has sent the header over the bar beautiful to watch in particular Martin Erdegaard fantastic bit of skill I'm not even sure how to describe what he does there. Ball's played into his feet and he just kind of rolls it around the corner. How he even knows Havertz is there, I don't know. And he just floats the ball to the far post. Saka wins the header up against Luca Dini on the far post, but just under enough pressure to not be able to kind of guide that header on target. That's a good friendship, doesn't he, with the uh, his Norwegian teammate Erling Haaland. I imagine those two are in regular conversations on WhatsApp. Oh, a mistake by Arsenal in their back line. The ball presented to Wally Watkins. Watkins in the box. Watkins has hit the post and has come back across goal and bounced out the opposite side for a goal kick. Oh, what a chance for Aston Villa and Ollie Watkins, who is really unlucky, not working with much. Swept that shot low towards goal. Raya beaten, but saved by the paint. Well, his first real sighter at goal, Ollie Watkins, and he's so, so unlucky. 
Gabriel who plays the ball off the back of Zinchenko. Now Arsenal down the other end with Gabriel Jesus having got there, reprieve. Erdegaard from the edge of the box, deflected, but it's come to Jesus, a cross goal, a cross out stop by Martinez, who has made one of the saves of the season with his feet. What an unbelievable stop from Emmy Martinez. Yeah, end to end stuff. Martinez, what a save. It's Erdegaard with a shot which cannons off a Villa player. And it comes to Jesus and he squares it across the six yard box. Trossard, first time finish, what a reaction save. And Martinez with that right boot, he's got no right to save that. Just looking at the Oli Watkins chance again, so, so unlucky. Hits the strike across David Raya. Comes off the inside of the post and somehow doesn't go in the other side. Misses that far post, goes out for a goal kick. So, so unlucky. Would have been his 26th goal in all competitions, Ollie Watkins. And then, immediately down the other end, a world-class save from a World Cup winning goalkeeper, Emi Martinez. And somehow, with the game now having really come to life with five minutes to go in the first half at the Emirates Stadium, it is still Arsenal nil, Aston Villa nil. Danny Gabidon. Yeah, Trossard, he thinks he's scored there, makes good connection. You know, he's right central area. Six yard box, he's thinking I make good connection here, you know, I score, but Martinez, fantastic reaction save. Arsenal with a bit of thrust in their attack. Saka for White. White cuts it back with his heel. He's got it to Saka on his left foot. Saka shoots and he shoots wide of the post. Nearly a carbon copy of the goal he scored here against Bayern Munich on Tuesday night. But that one not quite as precise from the England International. Yeah, Mikel Arteta much happier what he's seen from this Arsenal team now. And that's not too far away from Saka. You see him score from that area on so many occasions, gets it onto that left foot. No shot looking to find that far corner, inches away from that far post. Just rousing the crowd, Mikel Arteta. Doesn't really feel like they need rousing inside the Emirates Stadium today. Arsenal and Aston Villa, nil-nil, but going toe-to-toe -to -toe here on Five Live, on BBC Sounds and on the world service as well and remember if you are just joining us and you are unaware earlier today in our Premier League live game at Anfield it finished Liverpool nil Crystal Palace won so Liverpool still third in the Premier League table on 71 points the same as Arsenal who are above them in second with their superior goal difference and Manchester City at the top on 73 so an Arsenal win will take them back to the top Gabriel Jesus getting it off Torres on the halfway line off goes Trossard through the middle covering well Konza not particularly pretty initially from Villa but they got the bodies back there to deal with it only cleared away as far as Declan Rice though from Villa as uh, Tielemans retrieves it again for the visitors and then Carlos clips it upfield towards Zaniolo he traps it nicely with his left boot forced out towards this left hand side Nicolo Zaniolo with the Black strapping round his knees. He thinks he's got a free kick. He hasn't, but he has earned Villa a throw on the halfway line on the left. Yeah, his retention of the ball, Zaniolo, has been very good. He's been that kind of out ball for Aston Villa where they've been under pressure. They've looked to kind of get the ball into him and he's been very good under pressure in tight areas. He's played some clever passes, did a good job there of just retaining the ball and winning a throw in for his team. It's only his second Premier League start in four months, Nicolo Zaniolo. He's on loan from... Galatasaray but has obviously had a great career already even at his tender age with the likes of Inter Milan and Roma in Serie A as McGinn with that trademark pass with his left boot looking for Dinia who had advanced on the left side the Aston Villa fullback but Saka was back there defending him and very composed gives it to Rice Rice spreads it to Zinchenko and Arsenal suddenly come forward down the left hand side with Trossard Havertz is trying to get up there as well Trossard is up against Konza now teed up for Zinchenko on the edge of the box. He's got it through the gap for Havertz, who sends it across goal. But nobody's on the end of it. And Luka Dinja touches it behind. But it won't be a corner, because the offside flag is up against Kai Havertz. Well, he's going to make him pay at some point. He keeps making that run again. Oh, I don't think he is. It's really tight. I think Luka Dinja on this left-hand side might be playing him on. Maybe the Ryan should just let that go and... Plays it a cross goal to nobody in the end, but uh, he keeps making that run off the back of McGinn and keeps getting in. Last 60 seconds of the 
first half, plus stoppage time to play here at a packed Emirates Stadium with the white sloping roof above the stands and the white clock over to our right-hand side, high above the clock end, quarter past five, the time showing on it as Villa come towards the edge of Arsenal's box. Morgan Rogers has been caught and it is going to be a Villa free kick and it is probably about two yards outside Arsenal's penalty area. And he does a good job, Morgan Rogers, of just reading where the ball is going to drop down from that long kick forward. He picks up the second ball, gets there ahead of Declan Rice. And Gabriel just, as that right foot comes out, there's definitely contact there, I think. And right on the edge of the 18-yard box, pleading his innocence, Gabriel. Now, whether Luca Dean is going to take this free kick or not, I'm not sure, but he, he was the one that was very deliberately past the ball while the referee was dealing with the Arsenal complaints off the back of that conversation and that free kick. And we move into two minutes of stoppage time at the end of this first half. But what a prime opportunity here for Aston Villa to strike a very sizeable blow on Arsenal just before half-time. A free kick which is right of centre, a couple of yards, no more than that, outside the Arsenal penalty area. Yeah, and he does strike a good ball. Luca Dean it might be a a little bit too close to maybe get it up and over the wall. Very difficult. It's only well, probably 18, 19 yards out. So you might maybe elect to go the side that David Raya is standing. He's one of three Aston Villa players over it. John McGinn is there as well, and so is Yuri Tielemans, who we know is a very decent dead ball specialist too. So in the final 60 seconds at nil-nil here between Arsenal and Aston Villa, a free kick for Unai Emery's team on his return to the Emirates Stadium just before half-time and just outside the Arsenal box as the referee, David Coote, puts his whistle to his mouth. dina has got it up and he's got it into the Arsenal wall, but no further than that, it's away by Trossard upfield and the referee's whistle has actually gone for an Arsenal free kick and Villa will feel that is an opportunity wasted. Yeah, possible head injury to Gabriel, so the referee just uh, stopping play there, but it was always going to be difficult to get that up and over the wall. A little bit too close for Luca Dina. The wall did a good job. It jumps and does his job making the block. Well, indeed, Villa are suggesting that they were the ones in possession and they're pretty irritated that it's Arsenal that are going to be given possession back here from that drop ball, but that's the decision of referee David Coote. So the final seconds of the first half, Arsenal nil, Aston Villa nil. And Villa, who have hit the post to Ollie Watkins in this first half, but Arsenal, who have had several opportunities. The most notable one, the save from Martinez from Leandro Trossard. As Zinchenko rather wastefully sends a ragged pass forward, not to a teammate, but to Emi Martinez, the Aston Villa goalkeeper. And that, Danny, might be the last action of the first half. Yeah, quite possibly, but you can see that some of the Arsenal have worked on the last couple of days. Havertz kind of making that run in behind because they hold that high line, Aston Villa. And so there's a reluctance for Diego Carlos, obviously, to track Havertz. And he's just making that run from a deeper area off the back of McGinn. And that be something that Aston Villa need to look at at half-time. It has been a threat. Might be one more chance for Villa here before the break because they've just been given a free kick for a foul by Erdegaard, 20 yards inside Arsenal's half. He's barged Tielemans in the back. John McGinn is having his say with referee David Coote, who is not interested. He's turned his back and is walking away to mark out the 10 yards that Martin Erdegaard is going to have to stand here. As we move into the fourth minute of stoppage time of two that were indicated, but remember, that's a minimum. Villa free kick, McGinn with it left-footed, swept up to that far post and coming onto it was Gonza, who got to it, diverted it behind for a goal kick and there is the half-time whistle. Arsenal nil, Aston Villa nil. Villa have hit the post through Ollie Watkins. Arsenal have made lots of moves inside the Villa penalty area but only really have tested Emi Martinez with that opportunity from Leandro Trossard though. He's certainly been kept active by those in front of him. The Villa defence a little wobbly at times but from two teams, Danny Gabadon, that love goals, we don't have any so far here. No, we don't. And I think you and I, Henry, will be the happier of the two managers going in at half-time. He will have been well aware coming into this game how difficult it is to come to the Emirates. And at times they've been stretched defensively. They've had to defend really well in particular. 
Diego Carlos, who was outstanding in that first half, marshalling that back line. Arsenal have had moments. Leandro Trossard, chance probably being the best of the first half for them. But a post to nine, Ollie Watkins as well, did everything right. Great strike across David Raya, comes off the inside of the post and somehow doesn't go in the other side. So you have to say Aston Villa on the whole, I think, will be the, the more happier of the two teams to go in half time, still very much in the game and having one or two moments on the counter attack themselves in that first half. So uh, improvements to be made for Arsenal at half time, but they have been knocking on the door. They have got into good areas, just hasn't been enough clear cut chances up until now for them. Well, as it stands, and you're going to hear these words a lot in the weeks ahead, as it stands in the Premier League table, Arsenal remain in second, a point behind Manchester City. They have to win this game if they're to go back to the top of the Premier League table. But at the break here, at home to Villa, they are not. Arsenal nil, Aston Villa nil. So Manchester City's weekend as it stands after Liverpool's defeat, nil nil at half-time. I mean, the only observation, Danny, I would have is that the longer it goes on like this, the greater the pressure will be on Arsenal and the more galvanised the Aston Villa players will be by the potential opportunity. Yeah, 100%, Fletch. The longer this game goes on at nil nil, you know, you can... The crowd, I'm sure, will start to get a little bit more nervous, a bit more anxious. We saw that a little bit in midweek with the buy-in game. And, uh, you know, you just hope that doesn't kind of then affect the players. But, uh, look, Arsenal will continue to believe in themselves, I'm sure, second half. They'll continue to play exactly the same way. You know, he has good options. Mikel Arteta, obviously, from the bench as well to try and affect the game. Um, and, of course, it will galvanise Aston Villa the longer they kind of stay in the game. I think they've shown moments threats on the counter-attack at times in that first half um, you know they'll continue to believe as well so um, <laughs> they'll want to they'll want to get a goal you know ideally you want to get a, an early goal in this game and it kind of settles everybody down and you're able to kind of control the game better that hasn't been the case for Arsenal but look, as I said they'll, they'll continue to play the same way they'll continue to knock on the door and they'll believe that they'll be able to find that opening flex second half so still very much to play for for but from both teams Absolutely, looking forward to it. Chris Wise and Danny Gavin on with the second half. Nil-nil at half-time between Arsenal and Aston Villa. The closest either team came, Ollie Watkins, who hit the inside of the Arsenal post. Loads to get through between now and the kick-off at the Emirates for the second half. First, we've got to get the latest news from James Wickham. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. The Foreign Secretary, Lord Cameron, has said he's formally condemned in the strongest terms Iran's attack on Israel in a call with Iran's foreign minister. Writing on X, formerly Twitter, he said he made it clear that Iran must stop these reckless attacks, de-escalate and release the MSC Ares, the commercial ship with links to Israel seizing the Strait of Hormuz on Saturday. Meanwhile, the White House says it doesn't want to see the crisis in the Middle East escalate after Iran carried out its first ever direct attack on Israel. John Kirby, a US security spokesman, said Washington was not seeking a wider war. The president and the prime minister had a good discussion largely about the extraordinary success of last night. Again, look, the president's been very clear. We don't seek a war with Iran. We don't seek an escalated tensions in the region. We don't seek a wider conflict. And everything he's been doing literally since the 7th of October has been designed to that outcome. The Biden administration has led calls for restraint in response to Iran's attack on Israel, in which hundreds of drones and missiles were launched. Israel says nearly all were shot down. Israel's war cabinet has been meeting to consider its next step. Iran has warned of a bigger response in the event of Israeli retaliation. Hanok Midwilski from the Israeli Prime Minister's Likud party says there is unanimity in the Israeli government that there should be a response. How and when exactly and what sort of response, these things obviously uh, will not be talked uh, in public. But I don't think that anybody in his right mind can expect Israel not to retaliate after hundreds of uh, missiles were fired uh, at her direction. This is a very crucial time uh, in the history of the state of Israel. We are fighting for our lives. Iran says it gave its neighbours 72 hours notice that it would be carrying out strikes in retaliation for Israel's attack on its consulate in Syria. The Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has been taking part in a call with other G7 leaders this afternoon with the emphasis on resolving the situation diplomatically rather than militarily. Speaking to Laura Koonsberg on BBC One, the Cabinet Minister Victoria Atkins said the UK was working to ease tensions in the region. 
This was an incredibly significant attack on Israel uh, and the U United Kingdom, along with our international allies, are very, very focused on uh, de-escalating this. We do not want this to go further. We, know, we all understand how uh, difficult and sensitive it is in the region at the moment. And so all of our diplomatic efforts uh, are in that vein. And we'll have a new special on Five Live from 7.30 this evening on events in the Middle East. In other news, more than 250 survivors of the Manchester Arena bombing in 2017 are taking legal action against MI5. 22 people died in the blast after an Ariana Grande concert and hundreds were injured. And a man who lost his sight three years ago has become the first blind person to complete a marathon without being tethered to another runner. Yaya Pandor finished the Manchester Marathon with the help of voice instructions from a nearby guide. The 28-year-old completed the course in four hours and 22 minutes. Europe's elite club competition. The Champions League. Wednesday night at 8. It's the Champions League double bill. On BBC Radio 5 Live. Manchester City versus Real Madrid. Don't And over on Five Sports Extra. Bayern Munich versus Arsenal. The margins are very small in this competition, and that's the biggest lesson. The Champions League. On Five Live. And on Five Sports Extra. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Darren Fletcher. On Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. So second half to come from the Emirates. Nil-nil between Arsenal and Aston Villa. Loads to get through between now and then. Liverpool's title race suffered a big blow today after losing 1-0 at home to Crystal Palace. I should say their title challenge rather than their title race. They're currently third. Two points off Manchester City. Here's Jurgen Klopp. We are very disappointed, especially about the first half. So I, I said we will show reaction and I promised that. And we, we, we saw a reaction. We saw a an influence of the last game we saw that so obviously we lack conviction in the first half we were never really compact that's how it is and um, Crystal Palace deserved in the first half at the one elite and we couldn't turn it around in the second half so in terms of the the title race clearly no longer in your own hands how do you see it does that change your mindset your mentality for the final few games of the season it's easy to explain we play like the first half why should we be there we play in the second half we can win football games if we can win football games and we have to see how many we have to be around when the others struggle if they struggle at all we will see that and if not we still have need points for the Champions League. all these kind of things so it's a we have to play better football. That's my concern. And that for 95 minutes or 100 minutes. Then it's okay. And then take what you get. It was always like that. But you should not play like we played in the first half. But it happened. I couldn't turn it around with the boys that get this Atlanta game out of out of the system. Yeah, that disappoints me personally a lot. But now I cannot change that anymore. So that's Jurgen Klopp, but for Crystal Palace, the win takes them eight points clear of Luton in 18th with a game in hand. Oliver Glasner also spoke to Gary Flintoff. How good does it feel from a coaching sense in terms of the plan? You came here, you played your football, you played with your confidence, considering you are coming to Anfield and you are playing a team such as Liverpool. Well, it's always important uh, for me that we express ourselves we play who we are and what we are and and when we meet tomorrow it's always to say okay we did it our way and we tried our best and then we we can uh, uh, accept the result and of course it's much better when you you have three points in the pocket and you go home with uh, with a win here and uh, yeah first half was fantastic maybe the best half since we are here and Crystal Palace have done so well in the northwest of England this season. Is there something in the water in this part of the world that just works for you and your players? <laughs> I don't know. So it's, I just heard this, that the, the, it's uh, more raining than in London or in northwest. So maybe, yeah, it's, it's, it's something in the rain. But today was good weather. Uh, and so I don't know for, so if, yeah, if we need to go northwest. So I have to talk with with the chairman maybe to build the training ground here because then we can uh, can train uh, harder and, and get more um, better results. Oliver Glasner chatting to Gary Flintoff. His best win is the Crystal Palace manager. Eight o'clock tonight. Don't forget coverage of the final round of the Masters. When we finish, 6.06, Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton. Sav's here now. Uh, it's one of those days, Rob, that everything takes care of itself. I would think you're going to be swamped tonight. 
Oh, Fletch, yes, it was that game. <laughs> Liverpool, how many chances did they miss in the second half? Arsenal missing chances as well, Fletch. Could this be the best possible weekend for City? You know, we think City, Fletch, and you've you know you've been around long enough to think that City could win every game from now to the end of the season. Liverpool, what a bad couple of weeks, Fletch, going out against Liverpool in the FA Cup, Atalanta, Fienal, you know, defeat, and now losing home to Palace. But Palace were brilliant, Fletch, in that first half, as Jurgen Klopp says. So the title race, Fletch, this next 45 minutes... Will it be a case that just give the title to City after this 45 <laughs> minutes of Arsenal don't score? I know, it's one of them. You know what was on my mind as well on Friday, and it's kind of been backed up a little bit again today? I just wonder whether the fact that the Liverpool players and everybody at the club and all the fans and everything know that Jurgen Klopp's off at the end of the season, whether a pressurised situation is now even more pressurised because they want to give him the perfect send-off, they want him to sign off in style. You know, should they have just kept it internal? And then in the summer announced that he was leaving. Uh, Is yeah, this affecting them now, you know? It's a big one, Fletch, isn't it? Looking, because you look at Emma Hayes at, at Chelsea, they've gone out of the FA Cup. The treble's no longer on for them, but they're still in the WSL and the Champions League race. So it's, it's a great question, fans. Our Liverpool fans will obviously ring up the show on that. Manchester United reaching their first ever, you know, FA Cup final. Fletch, they beat Chelsea 2 1. And a save from Mary Earps, I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, Mr. James Header, what an unbelievable save. If nobody's seen it, you know, I'm sure it'll be on the BBC website. Look at the save from from uh, Mary Earps, from Lauren James. For me, the save of the season, Fletch. It Ooh, is unbelievable. Could... Yes, yeah, so could... United will take on Spurs, I think, Fletch, in the, in the, in the Women's FA Cup final. Yep. And Ross County. Um, Chris Oof. was in Scotland to see Ross County beating Rangers. Wow, what, what a day, Fletch. We're going to get loads of calls. Um, <laughs> uh, by the way, did on, on the Friday Night Social, did Clinton ever respond to me throwing him um, 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 through the table like a WWE wrestler? He's not been on since you said it, oh. but when he is on, I'm going to play it. So we, it, we, oh. it, it's still got, it's got to be concluded, this one. We might need yeah. you some kind of SummerSlam event sponsored by 606. <laughs> anyway, Tom, man, have a great one. Cheers, We're going to get back to the second half. Well done, Cheers, Sam and Chris. Cheers, on the man. way, later on, uh, Sutty's going to be delighted with the fact that Rangers lost earlier today. Um, when they finish, 8 o'clock tonight, live in Augusta for the conclusion of this year's Masters. Uh, world number one, Scotty Scheffler, leading by one, going into the final round. Uh, correspondent Ian. Ian Carter joins us now. It's going to be brilliant tonight, Ian. I think it is. We had a sensational day yesterday, Fletch, no question about it. And that's 71 from Scotty Scheffler, capped with a superb birdie at the last, just nudging the favourite ahead at uh, seven under pole. We've not had a, a bookie's favourite win the Masters since 2005 and Tiger Woods. So he's trying to buck something of a trend here, Scotty Scheffler, but he is by a distance the best player in the world at the moment. That doesn't guarantee victory by any stretch of the imagination. Nation. You've got Colin Morikawa, a two-time major winner, out with him in the final pairing. They're going to tee off at uh, 7.35 your time, just one shot behind. Max Homer really impressed me yesterday, even though he didn't hold anything in his 73, five under two behind. And what a debut it's been for Ludwig Ober, this Swede playing his first major at four under par within three shots of the lead. And just looking so unflappable, he might be the biggest threat to Scheffler later on. Yeah, briefly before we head back to the Emirates, what about conditions today? Conducive to decent scoring? It looks that way. I think they have watered the greens a little bit, so the traditional pin positions are there. Tom Kim's out there. He's had six birdies already in his uh, 11, 12 holes so far. So there are opportunities, but if you push too hard, you could hit trouble. Ian, looking forward to it. Ian Carter, part of our team later. Mark Chapman in the chair. The team live from 8 o'clock on 5 Live. Scotty Scheffler leads by one. Who's going to win the green jacket? You'll find out later on 5 Live. OK, massive 45 minutes on the cards at the Emirates. Not just for Arsenal, for Aston Villa as well. Liverpool have been beaten today. Pep Guardiola sat there with a glass of red after a lovely Sunday roast. Let's see what the Gunners do. Danny Gabidon, Chris Wise. There's a glass of Rioja, I think, waiting for somebody of these two. Two managers, Mikel Arteta and Unai Emery, off the back of what happens here. Which way this game is going to go? Which way this title race is going to go? Who knows? There has not been a draw, by the way, in the last 16 Premier League meetings between these two teams. The last one, November 2012, it was nil-nil at Villa Park, as it is here at the Emirates Stadium. Arsenal get us underway to a roar from the home supporters. 
at the start of his second half, going from right to left in the red and the white home shirts, the white shorts, the white socks, and Villa defending the goal to our left-hand side in their change strip of the all-blue and Danny Gabidon. It's inescapable, really, that there's this feeling that this is 45 minutes that is very, very big in Arsenal season in particular. Oh, well, it is. Look, there's still games to go. There's still points to play for. But we know how good this Man City team are when they get to this stage of the season. And they, it's quite conceivable they could obviously win every single game that they have left. So, uh, big, big second half for Arsenal. The longer this game goes nil-nil, the atmosphere in the Emirates will change and there will be that feeling of, here we go again. This happened last season, so a uh, big 45 minutes for this Arsenal team. Scooped out of play by Declan Rice, who kicks thin air in a frustrated motion because he feels that perhaps he could have done more with that. About this time of the season, really, is Villa prepared to take this throw, where everyone starts talking about players of the season, young player of the season, signing of the season. Declan Rice has got to be in that category, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been outstanding with every single penny and Arsenal paid for him. His consistency, you know, he's never injured really as well. His leadership skills, he really has added to this Arsenal team, he really has strength for that kind of midfield area. Here's Torres for Villa, sending one forward. Saliba has taken control of the situation. David Raya had come right to the edge of his penalty area, the Arsenal goalkeeper. Saliba said it's mine, and in the end, he's got Arsenal the throw. He's cleared it out of play off Luka Dina, but it's deep down inside Arsenal's half in that right back area so let me give you the two teams then no changes at the break Arsenal nil Villa nil for Arsenal Raya in goal White Saliba Gabriel Zinchenko Rice Erdegaard and Havertz in midfield Saka Trossard and Jesus in their forward line for Villa today Martinez former Arsenal goalkeeper Konza Diego Carlos Torres and Dina and then Tielemans and McGinn Diaby Rogers Zaniolo and Ollie Watkins Villa's leading scorer who remember hit the post in the first half here as John McGinn brings it forward with those broad shoulders but runs into Arsenal traffic halfway inside the Arsenal half and now the gunners come forward with Kai Havertz opening up his legs he's now halfway inside Villa's half and they're still not engaged and he's got it into the box for Jesus who's gone down a tangle of legs between him and Diego Carlos Jesus puts his hands to his head he's got his mouth agape but David Cooch shakes the head and says no penalty yeah, and all that come from John McGinn just running into traffic, losing the ball, and it just set Arsenal off on the counter-attack. Havertz driving towards that 18-yard box, and he just feeds the ball into the runner, Jesus, and there is contact from Diego Carlos, who comes across on the cover. Does like to have a little bite, Diego Carlos. I said it in the first half, needs to be careful inside that 18-yard box. I don't quite think there's enough contact for the, to give a penalty. Of course, penalties were all the talk here after Tuesday night against Bayern Munich. The ones that weren't given anyway, some in the Arsenal camp felt that perhaps they could have had one right at the end of the game with Bakaya Saka. Pretty much all, I think, in the Bayern Munich dressing room were adamant that Gabriel should have been penalised for picking the ball up in his box when only one can presume he hadn't heard the referee's whistle. Thomas Tuchel understandably infuriated by that and they do it all again on Wednesday night and it will be live on Five Live we'll have that game on Wednesday night we'll have Manchester City against Real Madrid as well at the Etihad that will be on Five Live Bayern Munich against Arsenal at the Allianz on Five Live Sports Extra it's just a, a huge shame they're on the same night really because the entertainment last week between those four teams was magnificent four minutes into the second half Arsenal midway inside Villa's half working it to the edge of the penalty area Havertz takes it on and he's clipped it up and the ball has bounced up off the hand of Yuri Tielemans it's outside the box but it is an Arsenal free kick well it probably is a free kick there's not a lot you can do about it though you know he's fired it at Tielemans hands and he's standing right next to Kai Havertz but does hit the hand so no other option really for the referee but to give the foul promising position here for Arsenal yeah we had that Villa free kick didn't we right at the end of the first half which they could not do anything with it's at the same end Arsenal attacking the north bank at the start of this second half there are four Arsenal players clustered round the ball which is five yards outside of Aston Villa's penalty area as they assemble their four-man wall a couple of free kick contenders have walked away from the situation now 
And Declan Rice, who is leant forward with his hands on his thighs at the moment, gives a little slap on the back of Merton, Martin Erdegaard and says, it's all yours. So the Arsenal captain is the only one at the moment who is standing poised and organising a wall of his own here, Martin Erdegaard, of three Arsenal players who have positioned themselves in front of that four-man Arsenal wall. It doesn't really suit a left footer. But he's going to take it on, Martin Erdegaard, and he is a magician, and he's hit the wall on this occasion. No rabbits coming out of the hat on that occasion for the Arsenal midfielder. And Villa escape and bring it forward down this right-hand side with Diaby. Five and a half minutes into the second half, we are on five live on BBC Sounds, on the BBC World Service network as well. And it is still Arsenal nil, Aston Villa nil, on a day where Arsenal began the game in second, Villa in fourth but so tight for Arsenal in terms of trying to get that title for the first time in 20 years. And for Villa to get Champions League football for the first time since it's become the Champions League. They haven't been in it since the European Cup and those wonderful heydays of the early 80s. Yeah, it would be a magnificent achievement on the job that Miami has done. This Aston Villa team really have been superb and they're in a fantastic position to do that. Champions League football next season. Villa Park brilliant for the fans Zanio just doing a good job again there Villa playing out balls played in and shows good body strength he struggled to cope with him at times Ben White's done a good job of kind of retaining possession using his body to draw fouls I mentioned in the first half that he's hardly been used by Unai Emery in recent months in starting roles Nicolo Zaniolo here comes Moussa Diaby one of the Villa players that's come into the team today he's got it into the box well left by Gabriel had the shout clearly from David Raya lifted his leg up like a flamingo to leave the ball to run underneath it and it goes through to the Arsenal keeper yeah, it's a poor pass in the end again it's a promising position for Aston Villa as he drives inside Diaby and he's just looking to play a pass into someone and continue his run and he doesn't find the Villa shirt in the end and that's where you know, Unai Emre Soil want his team to improve second half, a bit more kind of end product to these attacks. Finishing with a, a cross or a shot. Too many of the attacks have kind of broken down on the edge of Arsenal's 18-yard box. Villa trying to move three points clear of Tottenham Hotspur in the race for Champions League football. After a week where, because of the coefficiency, we won't go into all the details of that, but simply put, fifth place in the Premier League this season looking a little less likely at the moment in terms of getting an extra Champions League play so it might be all to play for between Villa and Spurs and with that and the title race and the European positions below them and everything that's happening at the bottom of the Premier League table these final few weeks of the season are going to be magnificent for the neutral and for those involved as Arsenal have to hurry the ball away from the byline inside their own half it's gone up towards Pau Torres who is 20 yards at the moment inside Arsenal's half engaged for Villa giving it to Diego Carlos. Here's the Scotsman, John McGinn, scored against Lille on Thursday night in Aston Villa's 2-1 quarter-final win in the Europa Conference League. And back on the halfway line again with Diego Carlos, this Villa defence who were uh, asked to make several late blocks in the first half to deny uh, Villa as Watkins gets it into the box. Zaniolo shoots left-footed, sliding Gabriel at his feet to block it. Back out to the left-hand side again, Villa working it, Zaniolo trying to get the space, it's dropped to Watkins, and Watkins has hooked it towards goal, and over the top of the crossbar as Raya jumps, but knows that it was harmlessly drifting away. They look threatening, Villa. They're able to play through that Arsenal midfield, ball into Watkins' feet, he's able to turn, he spots the runner, Zaniolo, left-hand side of the 18-yard box, and he just maybe has one too many touches, that allows, I think it's Gabriel to get across and get a block on the shot, but been good in possession, Villa. Sinchenko running into Moussa Diaby, who has got it back. Villa have played well in the first 10 minutes of this second half. They have certainly feel at least like they're a bit more front-footed in terms of their approach as Tielemann picks a hole in the Arsenal midfield and Rodgers brings it forward, the youngster, but scrapping and battling to get it back for Arsenal was Kai Havertz. Yeah, he's just got to release that. And Arsenal in turn, toning over the top as Jesus is offside. And it's a shame for him because it was an immaculate touch to bring it out of the air. Yeah. But the flag is raised. Just, he's just running with the ball for too long. He's got Diaby as an option on the right-hand side. He's just remonstrating with Rodgers there, telling him to play the ball to him. They've done a good job, Villa. They've been brave in possession. Arsenal have looked to press. They're trying to press high and done a good job of 
sucking Arsenal onto them and getting the other side but just losing the ball then in kind of key areas and on that occasion you know real need to from Rodgers needed to release that a bit quicker there's only a point between these two teams when Villa beat Arsenal earlier in the season at that point we were saying Villa in the title race maybe at the moment it is all about the focus on the Champions League and I think this is a, a rare occurrence today where you might have a portion of Tottenham fans wanting Arsenal to win it won't be all of them feeling that way and there certainly won't be too many who will tell you even if they do 11 minutes into the second half here and still we await our first goal on an afternoon where Liverpool have been beaten at home by Crystal Palace 6.06 tonight from half past six if you want to talk about that with Chris and Robbie 08085 909 693 Arsenal being held here by Villa but Erdegaard making pictures making patterns shifting it to Trossard swings it in from the left caught by Emi Martinez and was calm in doing so yes brilliant goalkeeping he's already on the move before Trossard whips that cross in really good kind of starting position just relieving the pressure off his defence Erdegaard lovely feet from Erdegaard as we come to expect and just plays the ball wide to Trossard and as I said really good goalkeeping from Martinez again won the FA Cup with Arsenal in 2020 Emi Martinez you might remember those scenes where he was in tears after the game having seen off Chelsea was that a time really where Martinez wasn't in the Arsenal team he had 11 years with Arsenal he only made 38 appearances for the club seven loan spells during that time he was an Arsenal player but only really by registration yeah and I think when he eventually got into the team I thought he played really well I yeah. thought it was a little bit harsh when Arsenal got rid of him but yeah of all the times to shift him it certainly felt like a strange one didn't it as Saka picks the ball up for Arsenal in midfield gives it to Zinchenko Nil-nil, Arsenal going from right to left in this second half on Premier League Sunday here on Five Live on BBC Sounds on the World Service as Zinchenko, the Ukrainian, moves the ball one way then decides to go the other. Got his first ever Premier League career goal against Aston Villa for Arsenal 14 months ago. Alexander Zinchenko didn't start the game here against Bayern Munich on Tuesday night. Jakub Kivior was in the team but only for 45 minutes. Here's Erdegaard, now Jesus, 20 yards outside Villa's box, an acceleration of pace, sandwiched out of it by two players, including Yuri Tielemans for Villa. Rice gets it again for Arsenal, his pass is a stray of Erdegaard. Villa clip it away, but only back to Arsenal possession again, and there's the tall frame of Declan Rice to pick it back up again with that dark floppy hair sat on top of his head as he tries to push it through for Ben White, who continued his run from right back Ben White. Villa have prevented that, but at the moment they're struggling to get hold of the ball just in these last couple of minutes. Arsenal's pressure is telling. Yeah, but that is going to happen. You know, Arsenal are going to have their moments where they they pen you in, control possession, and clear the ball. You know, he's a little bit isolated at times, Ollie Watkins. So you know, that's when Aston Villa need to just stay really focused and and concentrated and keep that defensive shape good. And you just got to get through those kind of moments, really absorb the pressure. I think I can see Leon Bailey stripped off, ready to come on for Aston Villa. So Unai Emery is the first one to show his cards here, a former Arsenal manager. He was one of two players that has dropped out of the Villa team today. Remember, this Aston Villa team do not have Douglas Luiz available because of suspension. That is a huge loss from their midfield, but they seemingly so far, as we head towards the hour mark here, are coping relatively well with this situation as Zaniolo barged out of it by two Arsenal players Havertz takes it off Saliba gives it to Erdegaard right of centre 15 yards outside Villa's box Tielemann standing it up into the area for Saka Torres getting himself in the way but it's going to be a corner Torres was trying to let that ball run behind and hope the referee thought it was going to be a goal kick yeah trying to fool the referee there he could have swung his left leg and possibly kicked that out for a corner for a throw in lets it go over the line hoping the linesman thinks that Saka's had the last touch. We've got the spider cam in the stadium today, which is drifting above the players just below us here. In our commentary position in the West Stand, as Arsenal, from the far right-hand side, will have this corner almost bang on the hour. Bakayo Saka is preparing to take it. There's plenty of movement inside the six-yard box being provided by Ben White. In it comes, headed away by Rogers, hit by Rice, and he's almost hit the second tier of the three-layered stand here 
in the north bank it's behind for a goal kick yeah difficult opportunity just looping down from that clearance from Rogers on that far post and he elects to take the strike on on the volley Declan Rice difficult skill so here comes that Villa change then off goes Moussa Diaby who is going to be replaced by Leon Bailey who's had a terrific season for Aston Villa eight goals eight assists in the Premier League alone this season in fact he's got the third highest expected assists in the Premier League Leon Bailey, only Manchester City's Doku and a man we're seeing today, Saka of Arsenal, are above him on that list. Yeah, eight goals, nine assists, I think it is. And, you know, he's really got him going this season. Kind of slow start to life as an Aston Villa player. A few injuries to contend with, but been very good this season. Saniolo, has he got a corner on the left? He has. He's done very well to get that out of Ben White. Tried to drag it back round him by the corner flag. It's bounced off the shins of the Arsenal defender. And in front of those 3,000 or so Aston Villa supporters, Villa have a chance just beyond the hour to leave a mark here on this game. 0-0. Yeah, Zaniolo doing a really good job again. It's really difficult, Ben White, up against him. Just the strength, him, strength of him is hold-up play. Done a really good job of getting Aston Villa up the field, drawing another a corner here for his team. Talking of Premier League assists, Yuri Tielemans has got five of them this season. And he's the one who's going to take this corner for Aston Villa on the far left-hand side. So it will be the Belgian with his right foot in swinging to the near post. Arsenal head on it, might have been Havertz eventually. Oh, Arsenal have lost it again. Brilliant effort off the crossbar. What a strike from Tielemans. And he's come off the underside of the bar. David Raya was beaten all ends up. And for the second time in this game, Aston Villa have rattled his woodwork. What a strike. Tillemans, does it hit the actual, does it hit the bar and the post and come out? I think it might have done. So, so unlucky. But Zinchenko, there, he's so weak in the challenge with Tillemans. He, he goes in, he doesn't want to win the ball. Tillemans wins it. He's on that left-hand side of the edge of the 18-yard box and he whips a fantastic shot towards that far post. Raya's beaten. It looks like it comes off a combination of the crossbar and the post and comes out. He can't believe it. Tielemans is a right smile on his face. Well, he's a scorer of great goals, isn't he, Yuri yes. Tielemans? That one he got in the FA Cup a few years ago for Leicester that won it against Chelsea. That was of the, the highest order from Yuri Tielemans. Think Kevin De Bruyne against Crystal Palace from a couple of weeks ago and maybe even a level above that because he was further out. Yeah, so, so unlucky, but he's weak in the challenge, Zinchenko, in the 50-50, almost costs him his team. Villa free kick, McGinn swinging it in, Arsenal defending a little ragged, it's dropped down towards Morgan Rogers, who had a couple of Arsenal players around him, then Gabriel Jesus has punched it with his feet away from him, but Bailey's got it back for Villa, now Tielemans has it on the halfway line, being harassed by Saka. Dinia sends it forward from the left-back spot, on it goes from Pau Torres, who's still up there, and then back to goalkeeper David Raya from William Saliba and the Emirates Stadium with a bit of noise urging their team to find their rhythm again because Arsenal have lost it a bit but can they regather it here Saka down the right hand side great game this 0-0 Arsenal and Villa Saka for Jesus hit it well pushed away by Martinez back in by Ben White towards the far post McGinn seen Jesus out of it and the offside flag eventually goes up against Ben White who was following up to that save from Emi Martinez. Yeah, it's a decent save. Martinez diving to his left, a save you would expect him to make, and they just get caught. Villa with bodies up the field. And Arsenal break really quickly, and just looking at that strike again from Tillman, so, so unlucky. Raya beating all ends up, whips it over the top of him, back off the crossbar. Has scored twice before. Oh, my. yeah, I'm just looking at <laughs> Yeah, it, <laughs> it is one of those, though, Danny. It really hits is. Hits the crossbar, comes down and hits the foot of the post and comes back out. It's unbelievable. Here they come again, Villa. Watkins trying to get in behind the Arsenal defence. Good defending from Saliba. That's why him and Gabriel have been so talked about in recent months for their expert defensive work sliding in at the feet of Watkins but Villa resurgent believing McGinn down the left hand side he's got the corner out of Declan Rice they're on top here at the moment Aston Villa they are posing some questions of title chasing Arsenal yeah you can just see that confidence growing so so important obviously going in at half time still very much in the game they do look like they're growing in confidence Villa those kind of 
space is starting to open up for them. I was going to mention about Tielemans, he scored twice before against Arsenal for Leicester and he actually was here 10 years ago with Anderlecht in the Champions League. They were 3-0 down Anderlecht to Arsenal in that game and they came back and got something from it. Villa corner, Arsenal changes forthcoming, more on that in a minute. Tielemans towards the near post, didn't go any further than Jesus who cleared it away. Back in by Digne and then the attempted overhead kick which... Uh, Morgan Rogers is apologising for, but it's left Martin Erdegaard in a crumpled heap on the floor. Might have been Diego Carlos who actually tried the spectacular there. I'm not sure what he's thinking there, Diego Carlos, as that ball kind of loops up. His back is towards goal. He's going for the acrobatic overhead kick. Erdegaard sticks his head in there. And that did not look nice at all. Completely misses the ball, catches Martin Odegaard. Hopefully this isn't too serious, but looks in a lot of pain. You were sort of wincing as it happened, yeah, weren't you? Yeah, as soon you? as it happened. I'm not quite sure where he caught him. Maybe the chest area. He's back to the goal. He's watching the ball. Eyes completely on the ball. Diego also, Carlos. And yeah, this looks like, thankfully for Odegaard, he kind of catches him in that chest area rather than the face. So while Martin Odegaard is needing the treatment, and as Danny Gabidon mentions, it, it's a very good job. It was not about three or four inches higher because it would have been a facial injury rather than one on the chest. We're going to see these Arsenal changes. And they're interesting ones as well because Takahira Tomiyasu, the Japanese international, he is one of those players who is ready to come on here. Ben White is making way for him. And also it is the end of the afternoon for Leandro Trossard who has been so impactful in recent weeks coming off the bench. Six goals as a substitute in all competitions, giving his chance to start the game today. Had that big chance, didn't he, saved by Emi Martinez in the first half. And Gabriel Martinelli comes on for him. Yeah, not a bad replacement. <laughs> <laughs> ben White, well, I did mention he has struggled a little bit against Anioli. He has struggled with his physicality not quite been at the top of his game so can maybe understand that change as well and it does look like Tommy Asu has gone to play in that right back role as well yeah. straight swap position wise being reunited with referee David Coote today take a hero Tommy Asu because he was the referee that sent him off at Crystal Palace back in August in the very early weeks of the season Still a super noise in North London on a super Sunday where Liverpool have been beaten and Arsenal have been held at the moment by Aston Villa at home. Nil-nil between these two as Digne clears it away for Villa from the edge of his penalty area up to Watkins, knocked out of it by Saliba, the Frenchman. And now Zinchenko with his blonde hair and a left-footed pass out towards Tommy Asu. And back in field towards Zinchenko as well, who plays as that inverted fullback. And it's his ball forward into the channel for Martinelli, who's got Konza up against him. And Martinelli's actually offside. And Villa knew, they knew the flag was going to go up against him. Villa are so good at getting those offsides. They've got another one here. Yeah, do play with that high defensive line, but more often than not this season, they have got that right. Catch lots of teams offside. Martinelli on that occasion, not quite up to the speed of the game yet. Just... Makes his run slightly too early. So earlier today, Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace won in the Premier League. In the Scottish Premiership, what a scoreline for Ross County. They beat Rangers by three goals to two. So they are still Rangers, four points behind Celtic, but with a game in hand. We now know who the Women's FA Cup final will be contested between Tottenham for the first time ever. Are into a final, they'll face Manchester United, who were beaten in last year's final by Chelsea, but beat them today in the semi-finals and later tonight from 8 o'clock we'll have live coverage from Augusta with the Masters Arsenal come forward inside Villa's penalty area ball in from Tommy Yasu Diego Carlos there before Gabriel Jesus out of play for an Arsenal throw on the far right hand side this Arsenal team who have been brushing everybody aside in 2024 nobody's got near them bar Manchester City but at the moment the only team that they've dropped points to in the Premier League City since the start of 2024 well, are Aston Villa going to add their name to that list? They're 20 minutes away from doing so. Danny Gabidon. Yeah, 38 goals scored in the last 11 games. Arsenal all conceded. We're pretty much averaging three goals a game. They've been swatting teams aside, as you say, Chris. But 
find it more difficult this afternoon. Aston Villa done a really good defensive job up until now and had a couple of big moments themselves in this game. Watkins wins the header on the halfway line. Saliba's boot was too high, so it's going to be a, a Villa free kick. I'll try to take it quickly, but the referee is not happy with the position of the ball or indeed the conversations that he was having with the Arsenal players, so has reordered Villa to take this free kick again from just a couple of yards inside their own half. 20 years since Arsenal last won the Premier League title. Got 77 points when they did so. They're on 71 right now prior to this game. They're going to certainly need 80-something this season to win it and maybe, maybe even 90-something depending on Manchester City and indeed and indeed Liverpool despite their defeat today. Yeah, I think the quality of the teams at the, the top of this league now, you know, if you're Man City, if you're Liverpool, I know they lost today, if you're Arsenal, you're thinking we've got to win all of our remaining games, you know, there can be no kind of slip-ups, even a draw obviously cost you the league, so uh, I think mean, that's the mindset of all, all of these teams now. Zaniolo's chipped past down the left-hand side beyond Luca Dina, who has moved forward with some pace from that left-back position. As Arsenal have to hurry it away with Gabriel upfield because he was under pressure from the pass given to him on the edge of his box. Martinez is now outside of his penalty area for Villa, the goalkeeper, as they try to continue the momentum that they have built up in this second half. It's felt like a different second half to the first 45 minutes, for sure. I think Villa have improved on what we saw in the first half. They've had a little bit more of the ball, a little bit more threatening. Game's opening up a little bit now as well for both teams, so we who can take advantage of that. Here's Gabriel Martinelli starting to run from inside his own half. He's had a little pull on Eshu Konza, which hasn't escaped the attention of the referee. There's quite a few around us who don't agree with that decision. He tries to knock it and put the afterburners on Konza there. He is quick, Martinelli, but he's no slouch either, Conso, and he just kind of gets across the line, Martinelli, and I think he just clips the back of his heels there. It's a good decision from the ref. He's had a magnificent season, hasn't he, Ezri Conza? Got his first uh, England caps yeah, as well last month. Deserved, yeah. Thoroughly deserved. He's been knocking on the door with that for a while. Yeah, it felt like a long time coming, didn't it? Free kick for Villa then, Diego Carlos takes it. Bailey tangling with Zinchenko. He ended up on the ground, the Jamaican international, but it wasn't a free kick. And Raya has quickly bowled it out to Tommy Asu, who has come on for Ben White in this second half. 73 minutes coming up on the, the big screen above all those Villa and Arsenal fans on the opposite side of the stadium to us, the southeast side of this stadium. Arsenal from right to left in their red and white home shirts, trying to continue the momentum that they've built up in recent months in this Premier League table. Or are they dropping points just as their title rivals Liverpool did earlier today? Nil-nil between these two, Zaniolo for Villa, accelerating away down the left-hand side. Halfway inside Villa's half now, the Italian. And on he goes, trying to get round the outside of Tommy Yasu as well. He's got a corner, is he? I think he has, Nicolo Zaniolo. That is brilliant work, applauded by Danny Gabadon. That's how good it was. Very, very good again. He's got nowhere to go, really. He's lacking options, but he drives up that left-hand side, goes away from Odegaard, gets to the byline. Tommy Yasu comes across and he's able to get another corner for his team I have to say the energy levels of Villa have been very good I thought with Arsenal having two days more extra rest that might be a factor in this game but up until this point 73 minutes gone hasn't been the case yeah toe to toe lung for lung Villa are matching Arsenal with every stride every breath another Tielemans corner coming in from that left hand side he's put both his arms up into the air it's at that near post again it's off an Arsenal head I think up into the air and behind, has Raya stopped it going behind? He hasn't. Villa are going to have another set piece here. Another corner for the visitors. Mm, done a good job up until this point, Arsenal defending these set pieces. More often than not, there has been a, an Arsenal head on it. He does have good delivery, Tillemans. What a delivery of that right boot as well that crashed the Arsenal crossbar earlier in this half. Goalless between Arsenal and Aston Villa just over 15 minutes of the 90 to play and another Villa corner as the Arsenal home supporters try to find the encouragement for their team Tielemans in towards the near post picked up by Torres Torres from the byline crashed it towards goal there's a couple of Villa players asking for a handball in fact more than a couple four or five now are asking questions from that Torres lethal effort 
towards the near post. It's a corner for now. Yeah, so many bodies in that area. Really difficult to see. It's whipped into that near post. Pau Torres is looking to twist and turn and get a cross in. It's definitely not handball. Plays it straight into the chest to have it. So there was all Tommy Asu possibly, I think it was. Corner after corner after corner at the moment from fourth place Aston Villa, who began the weekend below Spurs, but right now are above them in the Premier League table in fourth. Tielemans and other towards that near post. His corners haven't been great, to be fair. Cleared away by Jesus, back with Tielemans again. That delivery's taken a deflection as well. Zinchenko inside his box to head it away. Arsenal now might be able to break. Erdogan's got it out of his feet quickly. He's got it to this left-hand side. Arsenal have it with Declan Rice, who has checked in fields and tried to swing one from the left to the right for Jesus, who had peeled off. Picked up by Villa, though in midfield they're on the seconds at the moment Villa they got it again with McGinn yes brilliant from Tillemans that crossfield ball he intercepts he's the guy that actually takes the corner Arsenal break and he ends up intercepting that Declan Rice crossfield ball in that left back position brilliant work to kind of get back in Martinez sweeping it out to Dino with the bright orange boots on the Aston Villa defender, here is Zaniolo, over the top looking for Watkins who's run beyond Saliba but now has got Gabriel for company, Gabriel is outside of his box on that left hand side, Watkins has got the ball for Villa, here's Zaniolo now with Dina, Zaniolo trying to give it back to Luca Dina again, he's now had to go back towards the halfway line for Torres, 77 minutes in, Arsenal nil, Villa nil, Diego Carlos has Mikel Arteta outside of his technical area, arms aloft, barking instructions to his team here he'll be very aware that this feels a little familiar to Arsenal in moments of April last season well, they, can't, they can't think about that, they really can't here's Bailey for Villa right side of the box did Martinelli get the ball, he did Bailey thinks otherwise, he's on the ground Leon Bailey, Unai Emery has now got his arms outstretched either side of his body, the Villa Spanish manager trying to get the attention of David Koo to ask why it wasn't a free kick for Leon Bailey it is an Arsenal throw instead yeah, I think he just wants uh, to halt play here as well Emery zaniolo has gone down on that far side it would be a blow if they lose him because he's been excellent not quite sure maybe it's a little bit of cramp he has worked really hard in this game Arsenal keen to kind of get on with the game quickly and with Zaniolo down, one of his Italian international teammates is about to come on for Arsenal. Jorginho, one of Arsenal two changes here from Mikel Arteta. Remember, he's already brought on Tommy Yasu and Martinelli. And now he is dipping further into the reserves. And it is going to be Jorginho and Emile Smith-Rowe who are appearing from the bench here. And off go Gabriel Jesus. And is that Martin Erdegaard walking off? Looking away. He has looked a little bit leggy over the last kind of five minutes. Just, just watching him, Mario the Garden. Some of his recovery runs and trying to get up with play on some of those Arsenal counter attacks and maybe just uh, lacking a bit of energy. Do have good options though, Arsenal now. This is the strongest squad they've had for a long time. Mikel Arteta. Neil Smith Rowe is on. Mikel Arteta has spoken about him saying he's a, he's a joy to watch even if he isn't able to use him regularly in his starting lineup Emile Smith Rowe but they're going to be relying on him for the creativity now that the master's gone off Erdegaard Saniolo is just about getting back to his feet here play still hasn't restarted and actually it is going to be a, a villa change because he cannot carry on Saniolo and Alex Moreno the Spaniard is coming on for him yeah, definitely looked like cramp. He has put a shift in. Zaniolo, he's been very good. Rightly getting applauded from the Aston Villa fans over in that far corner as he makes his way round the pitch. Not found himself in the team too often in recent weeks. Alex Moreno was a, a regular in months gone by at the start of the season for Unai Emery. In fact, it was Unai Emery's first ever Aston Villa signing Alex Moreno. Ten minutes to go, plus stoppage time at the Emirates Stadium. Can you sense the nerves in here, or does it does it not quite feel like we're in that territory yeah, yet? It's gone a little bit quiet, but look, there is going to be games like this for Arsenal between now and the end of the season. It isn't all going to be plain sailing like it has been in the last 11 games, where they've just been 
brushing teams aside there are going to be games like this that are a bit tighter and you've got to find a way of winning them it's important that the crowd stay with the team Arsenal nil, Aston Villa nil but the best chance of the second half the one for Yuri Tielemans for Aston Villa where he crashed the ball off David Raya's crossbar and then off his post as well one of those where you scratch your head and you think how on earth did yeah. it stay out even the Ollie Watkins one in the first half how it hits the inside of the post normally you see them go in it actually evades then the, uh, the other post the far side Saka picking it up on the right hand side for Arsenal on the edge of the penalty area the substitute Jorginho has just come on in from Saka looking for Havertz his downward header was aimed towards the vicinity of Emil Smith Rowe but McGinn is there to clear it away and then Zinchenko takes a heavy touch on the halfway line Bailey gets it off him for Villa on this right wing Bailey cutting back in field then a chop to take it back onto his right foot and eventually with nothing on gives the sensible option of the ball backwards towards Konza yeah, it did well in the end to retain possession because he couldn't kind of find that half a yard of space to play that ball in behind so it did a good job of just keeping hold of the ball loose pass by Morgan Rogers, but then there was one that followed as well from Emile Smith-Rowe when he was presented with possession for Arsenal so Villa have it again as it stands they are going to be one point ahead of Tottenham Hotspur in fourth with Spurs in fifth and for Arsenal they are going to be second in the Premier League table on a weekend that is fast hurtling towards being a very, very good one if you are of a Manchester City persuasion. Liverpool beaten by Palace earlier on today on Five Live. You heard the commentary with Ian Dennis and Neil Lennon. Here's Leon Bailey, little layoff, Konza on the move, Zinchenko flat-footed, Konza halfway inside Arsenal's half, on the right, Watkins in the box, Moreno in there as well, delayed his cross and allowed Gabriel to make the block. Oh, the touch from Bailey was beautiful to release Konza down that right-hand side and he had an early option to just square in it to Moreno, edge of the 18-yard box, he elected to have another touch and then the attack kind of closes up a bit and he's not able to find Ollie Watkins in the end. John McGinn has just taken a piece of paper off Austin McPhee, the Aston Villa set-piece coach, down on the touchline. As uh, McGinn spins away from Kai Havertz. I doubt that was the, the message on the piece of paper. Here's Torres, now Tielemans, taking it off him from a short pass. 15 yards inside Arsenal's half. Now McGinn, Arsenal nil, Villa nil. But right now, you cannot argue that Villa do not deserve to take something from this game at the Emirates Stadium. Yeah, they've still got work to do. Dinya on the left-hand side, Saka with him in that defensive area, blocks the cross behind, ball bounces into those away Villa fans who are sensing something here, another Aston Villa corner. Yeah, nice little spell of possession there for Villa, Arsenal just sat a little bit deeper in this shape and allowing Aston Villa to progress the ball kind of up the field, they draw another corner, they haven't really made enough of these have they Chris? No, it is Tielemans, though, who's going to have another go at this from that same side over on the left. The same side, I believe, that a couple of seasons ago, Douglas Luiz scored directly from a corner here against Arsenal for Villa. He's suspended today. It's a short one this time from Tielemans to the edge of the penalty area. Moreno clipping it in away by Tomiyasu with his head. Then Moreno jumps with Emile Smith-Rowe. No free kick, though. McGinn's got it again for Villa, but he's quite deep at the moment, McGinn. Down on that left-hand side goes Dina, gets it off Moreno, into the near post, missed by Torres, Bailey's there, he scored for Villa! Leon Bailey has smashed that ball into the back of the net, and with six minutes to go, Aston Villa are pulling at the threads of Arsenal's title race. It's Arsenal nil, Aston Villa one. Well, it's getting even better for Man City now. Bailey on the far post. They do a really good job, Aston Villa, of kind of recycling possession. McGinn on the edge of the 18-yard box. And they work it down Arsenal's left-hand side, side of the 18-yard box. And it's a really good ball played across the six-yard box. I think it's Pau Torres initially who darts into that near post area. He looks like he might score, he misses it. Goes right across that six-yard box. And Bailey's there on the far post on a tightish angle, weaker right foot. He's able to fire it past David Raya. It's, it's Luca Dina down that left-hand side. He just gets inside Kai Havertz and he fires the ball across that six-yard box. Pau Torres doesn't get there, but he does a really good job of stopping Gabriel getting there. 
and the ball just evades it. Everyone goes out to Bailey on that tightish angle. So really good finish on his weaker right foot. He doesn't have a lot of the goal to hit there. David Raya scrambling across. Shows great composure on the finish. Wow, that is a huge, huge goal possibly in this title race. For the first time in 2024, Arsenal are behind in a Premier League game. How significant could that goal from Leon Bailey be? And how much character is there in this Arsenal camp? Because now we're going to find out. They've won a corner. There's five minutes to go. But Arsenal are losing at home to Villa, just as their title rivals Liverpool were beaten at home earlier today by Crystal Palace. And they've been in such good form, Arsenal. They've been making these results, these wins look so, so easy. It's not been so easy this afternoon. Villa have been excellent. Now they get their nose in front. Saka swinging it in, won by Rodgers, but it's not gone out of the penalty area. Saliba jumped and missed it. Tielemans has scooped it up into the air, but he hasn't got a great deal of distance on that either. Zinchenko immaculately bringing it out of the sky. And then misplaced by Jorginho. And Watkins from the halfway line has timed his run perfectly. He might be beyond here. It's Ollie Watkins. Smith Rowe is with him. Watkins delicately lifts it wow. over the goalie. And Aston Villa have scored again. It's Ollie Watkins who scored again. 26 goals this season for Ollie Watkins. He is having the season of all seasons. And Arsenal right now shaking heads, looking in despair because they've conceded two quick goals to Aston Villa. Remarkably, the scoreline now is Arsenal nil, Aston Villa two. What a finish, Ollie Watkins. The audacity, the composure to dink it over David Raya. And he's definitely off, not offside because he runs from in his own half as he gets played in. It's Arsenal turning the ball over. Jorginho looks to play a ball in behind. It's cut out by Tillemans. He sees the runner Watkins. And it's Samuel Smith, though, who's desperately trying to get back in. And he does a really good job of holding him off. And he takes it onto his right foot. And it's just a little dink. Possibly takes a little nick off the first Smith, though. Over the top of David Raya. It's a wonderful finish, it really is. Incredible, Chris, incredible. I'd love to know if anybody predicted Liverpool and Arsenal losing at home on this Sunday afternoon on Five Live. Arsenal nil, Aston Villa 2. There are Arsenal fans with fingernails in mouths, shaking heads because this right now for the Gunners and we will talk about how brilliant Villa have been in this second half in just a moment but right now this feels like deja vu for them I have to say I didn't see this one coming you know I thought they could trouble them Aston Villa 2-0 up I really didn't see that you have to say they've been excellent second half kept themselves in the game in the first half Aston Villa had that big chance with Watkins in the first half that hit the post They've been really, really good second half. They've kept Arsenal quite restricted them. The Kyle Saka on our answer. We haven't seen too much of him second half. And Unai Emery. Unai Emery on his return to the Emirates Stadium. The former Arsenal manager masterminding one of the best performances of Aston Villa's season. It certainly will be one of the very best results of their season if they hang on to this two-goal lead. But is there anything left in the Arsenal tank? 2-0 down. Here's Martinelli deep inside Villa's half on the left low ball in up into the sky from Diego Carlos caught by Emi Martinez and no surprise to see him drop on top of the ball yeah, no surprise to see Diego Carlos on the end of that cross there as well he's been like a magnet he's defended magnificently he's contributed massively to this Aston Villa performance now they've got the goals on top of it you never doubted Ollie Watkins did you when he went through in fantastic form this season and he always seems to pick the right finish great composure execution on the finish the dink over the goalkeeper Ollie Watkins the boyhood Arsenal fan with the second Villa goal and the celebration over by the corner flag in front of the Villa fans as if he'd just sort of finished a, a two hours of a London a London show in a theatre yeah. the, the waving of the hands as if to say thank you very much that's me done for the night yeah 19 goals 10 assists for Watkins this season incredible yeah and that's in the Premier League alone 
He's only one behind Erling Haaland in that golden boot race. And you'd be very, very brave to stick your neck out and say it will be Haaland's again. Arsenal coming forward down the left with Martinelli. It wasn't a good ball for him, though. He was a little short from Nketiah, who has come off the bench for Arsenal amongst the pandemonium as McGinn slides into the challenge on the halfway line. Eight minutes of stoppage time, but Arsenal are going to need one of those those great gunners' reprieves that we have seen here before. We did see in the early portions of last season. They're going to be relying on that experience now. They're 2-0 down. Danny Gabidon. Yeah, and balance has been the word that we've used so much for this Arsenal team this season. Defended magnificently and scoring lots of goals, but they just get caught with bodies up the field on that second goal, maybe just chasing things, trying to get back in the game. Ball goes in behind, and it's actually Emil Smith throws the man who's trying to track Ollie Watkins and get back and do something to stop him. He's not able to. Nicely worked by Arsenal on that right hand side. They've got a corner here. The cross deflected off Alex Moreno from Tommy Asu, who is desperate to go and get the ball. I thought it'd gone out for a corner. It hasn't. It's gone out for an Arsenal throw instead, but we've played a minute now of the eight of stoppage time. Arsenal need two goals just to get a point here. Their unbeaten record there almost perfect record of 2024 bar that draw with Manchester City and that's hardly drop points at the Etihad well this really is drop points today losing at home to Villa yeah looks like Villa are going to do the double over them yep great point Danny they beat them back in December 1-0 as well at Villa Park back when we were saying Villa were title contenders at the moment in terms of the title the ball has just moved significantly into Manchester City's court this is Saka can he pull something out of the bag for Arsenal. Flicked into the box, Smith Rowe, right of centre, tried to pull it back for Nketiah. Jorginho, Tommy Asu didn't really want it, never really looked comfortable. He's got it back to Jorginho on the edge of the penalty area. Now Gabriel, they're all forward inside the final third here, Arsenal's players. Tommy Asu swinging it in, Nketiah on his chest, couldn't get the volley away. Back to the edge of the box, Bailey and Rice collide, foul by the Arsenal midfielder on Leon Bailey, who got that first Villa goal, and the visitors have a free kick. Yeah, two Aston Villa players down. Diego Carlos being one of them. Leon Bailey the other. But really important clearance again from Diego Carlos. He has been magnificent for them this afternoon. He's been right at the heart of this performance. Magnificent defensive display. He's been in the right place at the right time so, so often. Defended really well, Villa. And then taking their chances in the second half. Just looking at that Watkins finish again. It's outrageous, really is. Just the mark of a man who, whose confidence levels are at 100% right now. Yeah. Not quite being at it second half, Arsenal. Maybe the energy levels, I don't know, from the work they had to put in in midweek. To get a result against Bayern. Not quite looked as sharp as uh, maybe what we thought. And that's the other aspect of this because Arsenal have got to then go to Bayern Munich on Wednesday off the back of this. Live on Five Live, Sports Extra on Wednesday evening. We'll have Real Madrid at Manchester City as well on the same night. And we'll look at those fixtures in just a moment for Arsenal and indeed for Aston Villa, who of course are playing Lille. So they're in France on Thursday night in the second leg of their Europa Conference League. But they are 2 0 up here, Aston Villa. And they have delivered a majestic second half performance topped with that brilliant Watkins goal is there more to come Bailey poking it in Watkins for another one saved by Raya got a hand to it David Raya decent save from him offside flag was raised anyway Villa at the moment are on the up brilliant football you know, they're trying to get a third yeah Bailey maybe just straight offside but the football's brilliant on this right hand side to release Bailey cuts it back inside to Watkins he dances in between two players with his first touch and he's trying to poke it past Raya makes a good save but it was offside down the other end Arsenal with Martinelli Rice from 30 yards over the top of the crossbar puts his hands on his head rubs that thick black hair of his Declan Rice the ironic cheers from the Aston Villa supporters the stern faces of those in red and white in the home crowd with arms folded and right now wondering, wondering if Arsenal's title push is crumbling again. Their next Premier League games, Wolves away, Chelsea at home, the North London derby at Spurs, Bournemouth at home, Man United away, 
Everton at home. They are the final fixtures for Arsenal of their Premier League season, but they are going to need a mighty reset after this. Yeah, it just shows how difficult this league is, Chris. You know, nothing is a given. You know, look at the form Arsenal have been in, and into this game. Being at home as well, you, you just fancy them not really to drop any points between now and the end of the season, but... Uh, Got to give a lot of credit to Aston Villa, the way they have performed. You know, going into this game themselves with just the one win in the last five games and looking at maybe they're not quite at the top of their game when you really need to be at the business end of the season, but the way they responded after a good result in midweek against Lille to come to the, the Emirates and perform to this level deserve a lot, a lot of credit. They do. Yeah, Manchester City put four past them a couple of weeks ago at the Etihad. Arsenal have not been able to score against Aston Villa today and we're in the sixth minute of stoppage time remember eight indicated the ball is back with Emi Martinez who doesn't take any chances inside his six yard box clobbers it up to the halfway line one by Saliba for Arsenal who are 2-0 down at home to an Aston Villa side who've only won one of their last five in the Premier League and are going three points clear of Tottenham Hotspur and really getting a grip of that fourth Champions League spot here Villa with this victory which is impending you feel unless there's a very late Arsenal show here's Smith Rowe Saka on the right of Villa's penalty area Jorginho on the edge of it Jorginho into the box Tommy Asu's layoff in Ketia great defending from Villa again that is superb stuff was that Diego Carlos chucking himself in there yeah, it was, John McGinn. was it McGinn yeah, yeah it was McGinn yeah and no. he, he's been in there yeah. as good as those Villa centre-halves, yeah. hasn't him, he? Him and Tillemans have done a fantastic job in that midfield area. Not just kind of getting forward, Tillemans with his passing range, linking that midfield to the attack. But they've both done a brilliant job of kind of dropping in at times, protecting that back four, almost in the back line at times when those balls are in and around the 18-yard box and getting vital blocks in and vital tackles in. Both of them being absolutely magnificent in the absence of Douglas Louise. The away end is bouncing, as you can imagine. Those Villa fans right now are enjoying this. They don't get too many victories at, at Arsenal. In fact, they're, of their last six visits to the Emirates Stadium, they've only picked up points on one occasion. They won here, and that was when there were no crowds allowed in. Here's Watkins trying to escape again. Whistle's gone, though. It's going to be an Arsenal free kick. 6.06 to come with Chris and Robbie. 08085 909 693. They're not going to be short of talking points tonight with Liverpool and now Arsenal set to be beaten. I'm just looking at Bukayo Saka, they just went down there under that challenge and he has been very quiet second half. He was involved heavily in that first half, but second half, they haven't really seen him get a lot of the ball. Also, he's carrying a knock. He did get a knock in the first half, but. Danny, the thing that's just struck me, look look around the Emirates Stadium. There are so many empty seats in here. It feels like 30% of the home crowd have gone. Well, the Masters is on as well, Chris, soon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a few of them want to get home to watch the golf, I don't know. But, um, yeah, they've seen enough, these Arsenal fans. McGinn clipping it out to the right-hand side for Leon Bailey. Watkins is in the middle, Arsenal trying to get bodies back. Bailey is uninterested in running into the penalty area. He's going to run down towards that corner flag, eat up a few more seconds for Aston Villa, and there are only a few more seconds left. They are closing in on a magnificent afternoon. Aston Villa and Unai Emery, the former Gunners manager, back here for the first time in a domestic game. He came here with Villarreal a couple of seasons ago, knocked Arsenal out of the Europa League at the semi-final stage. This will feel big for him. There will be big celebrations in the Villa camp as the ball goes back to Emi Martinez. A look at the watch from referee David Coote, puts his whistle to his mouth. Arsenal have been beaten in the Premier League for the first time in 2024. They have been stung by Aston Villa. Late goals from Leon Bailey. A brilliant second from Ollie Watkins. What an afternoon for Unai Emery back at the Emirates Stadium. What a weekend for Manchester City at the top of the table. Liverpool beaten, Arsenal beaten, Manchester City top of the tree on this Sunday night. Danny Gabidon. Incredible, incredible performance by Aston Villa. Didn't see this one coming, coming into the game with the form that Arsenal have been in, the form or the current form that Villa have been in. But they deserve massive amounts of credit. Your know, first half kept themselves in it. Arsenal, two or three good chances, weren't able to convert. 
the second half I thought Villa were the better side I thought they controlled Arsenal really well maybe Arsenal in the energy level second half not quite there Mikel Arteta making changes trying to affect the game that didn't really work either and then Villa get that second goal get that breathing space and we're able to see the game out fairly comfortably in the end so huge huge result for Villa in terms of the, the race for the top four that bit of a three-point cushion now between them and Tottenham and a huge huge blow for Arsenal in terms of the title challenge look there's still a lot of time to go points to play for but you feel it's advantage Man City now incredible day Liverpool losing and Arsenal as well just didn't see it coming at all plot twist to end all plot twists on five live this afternoon Liverpool losing at home to Crystal Palace in our two o'clock live commentary and here at the Emirates Stadium as the Aston Villa players embrace they have come to Arsenal impeccable Arsenal in recent months Bailey in the 84th minute Watkins in the 87th and it has finished remarkably Arsenal nil Aston Villa 2 so it's a day where Aston Villa essentially do a North London double um, whipping the rug out of Arsenal's title challenge with a 2-0 win and also putting themselves three clear of Spurs in the race for fourth place which guarantees a Champions League spot next season I mean we haven't really got a great deal of time to reflect on it Danny I was just a little bit surprised second half the lack of fight from Arsenal there yeah, the lack of energy, I think, Fletch, as well. I don't know if uh, midweek maybe caught up with them, uh, the game against Bayern, but they didn't really offer too much second half. You know, as the game went on, you know, we spoke about it, Fletch, at half-time. The longer the game kind of went on at 0-0, uh, would Arsenal kind of get edgy, looking to find a way to kind of get in front? Villa would kind of grow in confidence, and that's exactly what happened as the second half went on. And, and I, I thought Villa looked the more dangerous they were the better team you know Tillemans was unlucky hitting the crossbar not to put Villa in front you know expecting that kind of reaction from Arsenal and it, it kind of never really came it was comfortable for Villa in the end once they got that second goal it was very easy for them to kind of see the game out um, we, I just didn't expect that from Arsenal with a form that they've kind of been in flat so um, that is a big big surprise for me that result but I think all credit to Aston Villa you know, the game plan was actually spot on the way they defended Diego Carlos in particular I thought was absolutely magnificent Zaniola on that left hand side did a great job in terms of kind of retaining possession for them and Ollie Watkins gets two chances in the game hits the post in the first half makes no mistake with uh, the chance in the second half and that was the one that really killed Arsenal off so a uh, big big result for Villa and it's going to be really interesting to see how Arsenal respond to this one now Danny Chris thank you what a fascinating day it's been the Premier League table after 32 matches Manchester City top 73 points Arsenal second 71 Liverpool third 71. It's been a memorable day. Um, thanks to Chris, thanks to Danny, thanks to everybody who's contributed on the programme today. That's all from me on a massive day in the Premier League title race. Liverpool lose and Arsenal lose. And don't forget, in Scotland, Rangers lost as well. It's been quite a day. Don't forget, from 8 o'clock tonight, Mark Chapman live from Augusta National for the conclusion of this year's Masters. 6.06 with Robbie and Chris. I wonder what they're going to be talking about tonight coming up here on Five Live. First, it's the BBC News with James Wickham. Listen on BBC Sound.